It is a rivalry second to none in Indiana high school football. And tonight, these two teams will battle it out for a chance to get a huge win third game into the season. It'll be Ron Colley. They're ranked number six in the latest AP4A poll. And Bishop Chittard, the defending champions in 3A, they're 2-0. They're ranked number one in all of the respective polls this season to this point. Tonight's game being brought to you in part by the Morales Group. Building better futures one story at a time. Aspen Creek Grill. Why go anywhere else for delicious food? Burton Electric. Providing quality electrical services in central Indiana. Boilermaker 374. We're second to none in quality and performance. Clean Slate. Inspired innovation that moves business forward and Piper Logistics from warehousing to transportation and everything in between. It's a beautiful night. We've been very blessed with good weather through the first three weeks of the high school football season. This might be the best of all of them. Troy Derogowski along with Coach Keith Myers. The anticipation is upon us. We're ready to go in about another 10 minutes or so. The kickoff will happen between these two rivals. There is no better atmosphere than in high school football. I think that Bishop Chittard should be a fun one. Tailgating everywhere. Yeah. Thank you for the cheeseburger. Yeah. Uh, this week, uh, this time last week, it was 92 degrees. The humidity was at, at 82 percent. That's good. Today now is 81. No humidity that you can count on. Six mile an hour wind, which is really nice. Visibility 10 miles, so you you could throw that past 10 miles and someone can catch it. And uh, I rate the cheeseburger number one today. Oh, good. Yeah, it was Very really good. good. Yeah, you, these two rivals, they, they, fran they frankly, uh, th this has been like a title game for the conference for the last couple of years, throwing Babuff a little bit as well, Garen Catholic a couple of years ago. Uh, it's just an unbelievable atmosphere. This place is kind of empty now, but in about uh, five minutes when everybody, when they close the ca tailgate, They'll be all right in here. Yeah, well, they're coming. I can see them on the way. Let's go ahead and scout these two teams and see how they got here. We're going to start with the Royals of Ron Colley. Now, they opened up with a win over Southport, 43-20. to They led that game 16-6 after one, and then they blew things out at halftime, leading at 37-6. Henry Adams, 105 yards. They ran for 222 yards on the night. But then they go to Franklin Central, play a very good Franklin Central ball club. They were down at the half, 7-6, and then the Flash has outscored Ron Colley, 13 to nothing in the third. And they lose it 20-6. to six. And by the way, just for your note, that you'll probably want to bring up an, up some point, the last time that Ron Colley was held at that few points, you have to go back to the 2020 season when Ron Colley lost to Bishop Chittard 28-7. to The offense just wasn't there. A lot of injury occurred as well. Ron Colley lost some key players uh, in that game. And, you know, Franklin Central has no slouch. Franklin Central has made a big comeback uh, for the game uh, of the season. They're going to be a pretty good team to, to match up with uh, in the future. Now, you, you talk about injured players in maybe the first two games, but think about the players they lost last year. They lose 12 players Seems. who went to college. Yep including Luke Hansen, their all-time leading rusher. He goes to Dayton. Eric Moyers, their quarterback, he's now at Western Michigan. Trevor Lauk goes to Iowa. Brady new to Central Michigan. And Luke Scardivet goes to Northern Illinois. So think about losing all those players. And Are, the, are those teams any good? Well, they're not <laughs> Michigan, but they're okay. <laughs> okay, they're, they're there we go. One. So that's a, that's a tough, a lot of tough key players yeah, to lose. You, bet. you know, we talked to, I talked to Dave Lauk. Uh, Trevor's dad, and he says, you know, he's in Iowa. 
Not playing, but he's in Iowa. Yeah. Hey, I'd rather be somewhere not playing in being on a ro Big Ten roster. Oh, yeah. Well, he'll play eventually. Oh, yes. He, in he Iowa. Made some noise. Club. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about Bishop Chittard. They're 2-0 and on the year. They're ranked number one again. We saw them in the scrimmage. We also had them in their first game. They got out to a slow start against Brabuff. They were down 13 to nothing, and then they took off. They really rolled last week. What did you see in them in your last game? One of the things that I saw was the consistency. They they jumped off early. They didn't make the mistakes. You know, the Brabuff game, they made three mistakes right away, three turnovers. Cost them uh, 11 points, 13 points, I do believe. Yeah. Uh, last week, they were a fine-tuned oil machine. They came out today with their walkthrough. And, Troy, usually it's like 25 minutes long. 10 minutes long. Hmm. And then he goes, let's go. And it's like, okay, either coach is real confident or they're not playing very well, and he's going to uh, talk to them a little bit in the locker room. But I think both teams know what this means in the conference. Uh, both teams know that this is – everybody's watching this in central Indiana because this is one of the games that is a spotlight tonight. The sports page uh, spotted like this game tonight. I don't know who that guy is, but he – apparently knows a little bit about football. <laughs> We're going to take a timeout. We'll come back here on the pregame show talking about more in this one. Ron Colley and Chatard coming up in a moment right here on Indiana SRN. Hey, folks, good to be with you for tonight's game. My name is Andy Simpson, and I'm a licensed IHSAA football official. And welcome to Friday Night Football powered by Indiana SRN. On behalf of the 340 football officials, the IHSAA, the crew here at Indiana SRN, we hope you enjoy tonight's game. And more important, don't forget to subscribe to the Indiana SRN YouTube page. As you're watching tonight's contest, I'm going to show you a few of our signals that will help you better understand the information we are trying to convey. Touchdown. Safety. First down. Holding or illegal use of hands. Encroachment or offsides, commonly known. False start or illegal formation on the offense or a free kick scrimmage violation. Face mask, intentional grounding, roughing the passer. Clipping, illegal shift, illegal motion, illegal block. Pass interference by the offense or the defense, delay of game, and the one signal we dislike and you as fans don't like seeing, unsporting. We'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight and following us on Indiana SRN. You can also tune in to the Football Weekly Show and Coach's Show every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. on IndianaSRN.org. Finally, if you've ever thought about becoming a high SSA www.ihsaa.org and click on the officials tab or call the IHSAA office at 317-846-6601. Now sit back and enjoy the game. Back here at Bishop Chittard High School, a third week already of high school football and no bigger game around the state perhaps than this one right here. And it is time for the ever so famous Indiana SRN football polls. They, by the way, didn't get to me until like Friday, but they're supposed to be in a Monday but we've got him for you tonight. Yeah, I got him. I took him right, <laughs> I took him right off the press. I, I didn't get any hate mail because I just posted him this morning. <laughs> yeah. uh, 1A, Indianapolis Lutheran. This is the Indiana SRN poll. 1A, Lutheran. 2A, North Decatur. Um, number two, Adam Central, number three. South Putman, number four. And North Jetson, number five. In 2A, Evansville, Modern Day. They have a very tough ball game against Vincennes tonight. Triton Central is two. Linton Stockton. Indianapolis, Cena, and Heritage Christian. They both meet soon, I think next week. 
In 3A, Chittard, Garen Catholic, Tri-West, Hanover Central, Oak Hill. 4A, East Central, Evansville-Vites, Evansville Memorial, Northwood, and Kokomo. 5A, Fort Wayne Snyder, Bloomington South, Merrillville, Decatur Central, Bloomington North, and in 6A, your Ben Davis Giants, <laughs> Hamilton Southeastern, Westfield, Fishers, and Crown Point. All right. Well, we've got – we could argue about a lot of those choices, but let's talk about – the big games tonight on only this one, but there are a ton of games around the state. Now, my list is totally different than yours. Well, I, it's, it's about 80% wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have one, I think Lutheran Triton Central is a big game. That's a big game. Yes. I think Cecina Kevin and Christian is a big game. Yes. East Central Cincinnati Molar at Cincinnati Molar. That would be a huge win for East Central. Yes. Garen Catholic Heritage Christian, that's on our sister st- station. Yep. Evansville Modern Day and Vincennes. Evans Memorial and Evansville Central. Kokomo and Logansport. Go, go ahead. Go, <laughs> go ahead. Give me that one. Pa, ben Davis and Pike. Uh, Lawrence North Lawrence Central with Battle. That battle, was, battle Lawrence, that's a good one. And Hamilton Southeastern and that powerhouse Avon. <sighs> well, what, what are hey, your, listen. What are your big keys? Well, okay. Well, let me give you a I mean, couple we, of them. Some of time. them will probably. Let me get to the top here. Okay. Uh, in no particular And you didn't order. do 10. You did like 35. I did. Brownsburg, Franklin Central. You forgot that one. Okay. Uh, Louisville, Trinity, Center Grove. That could be a good one. Westfield at Zionsville. That? Cathedral and Penn. No. Ca- not oh, even, not oh, even close. Oh, man. Okay. Number, number 8 and 6A, number 6 and 6A. Now, on paper, you may not like it, but it's close. Okay. All right. You mentioned Lawrence Central, Lawrence North. Fishers, Noblesville tonight. Crown Point, Merrillville. Uh, Decatur Central, Central, Whiteland, Concord, and Northwood, both unbeaten teams. Mishawaka, Northridge, also Evansville, Wrights, and Jasper tonight. You, you mentioned two other Evansville teams. You didn't give uh, Wrights any credit, and they're Sorry number two that. and four A. Uh, also, Greenfield Central, Mount Vernon, the battle. I'll wrap it up here in a minute. Mount <laughs> Vernon and Greenfield, the battle of Hancock County going on. I've got others, but we'll go ahead and take a break because Keith. Already knows, as you see, the Trojans making their way out on the field that I had the better games than Keith did. We'll come back. Kickoff is coming up in a moment right here on Indiana SRN. To you. Week three of the high school football season, and Ron Colley will be in the white, and you'll see Bishop Chittard in the blue. Let's go back to Keith for keys to tonight's game. Brought to you by our good friends at Mor- uh, Morales Group. Keys for Chittard controlling the line of scrimmage, Tro- uh, Troy. I think if they can control the line of scrimmage, limit their turnovers, stop Ron Colley in the red zone, and put pressure on the young quarterback, I think they'll be very successful. For Ron Colley, they get out to get off to a quick start ball control, key players that are in the lineup tonight has to make the big play. I think the quarterback, not not everything has to be on his shoulders, but he's got to control the tempo, and I think Coach has worked out a game plan where he can do some things because he's got an arm. We see he's got an arm, and he's got receivers. We'll see. If I'm Ron Colley tonight, I'm onside kick in this game, uh, this ball. Are you? Yes, sir. Already? Yes, sir. Wow. We saw it last week. Believe it or not, Trey, we saw it last week at Covenant Christian and Greenwood Christian. Greenwood Christian onside kick and scored the next play and then had a 15-yard penalty. Didn't didn't bounce back after. Yeah, that's why you don't do it. Okay. By the way, Levi Whistler, I was watching him in the warm-ups, and this young man has a heck of a leg. So I'll be curious to see if Bishop Chittard will even get a return 
on this kickoff. We'll set the offense for you in a couple of moments. In fact, let's do it right now for Bishop Chittard. It'll be Campbell, Troy, Wright, Woods, and Ortega across the front five. You have Aiden Ortega, the quarterback. We'll give you his numbers in a moment. Riley Kinnett, 46 carries, 393 yards, five touchdowns. He'll split time with Shaw with 90 yards rushing. Line drive kick, and this will be into the end zone for a touchback, and Bishop Chittard will take it at the 20. Harrison Forstall will be the tight end. Jack Waybright, one of the receivers, along with Ryan Keating and the ever-so-dangerous Colin Guy. Defensively for Ron Colley, Sam New, David Wilson, and Justin and Cisco across the front line. Dylan Henry, Ben Brandenburg, J.J. Pendergast, Marty Babcock are your four linebackers. Cal Davis, A.J. Richardson, Sam Roeder, and Bryce Heimlich are the DBs. First and ten for Bishop Chittard. They're averaging nearly 48 points per game in their first two ball games, and they'll open up trips to the left. Tight end will reset, and they'll work hash mark near side. Handoff will be to Kinnett, and he might get back to the line of scrimmage. They might even just give him a half a yard on the play. It'll be second down. Thanks to our officials for today's game for their hard work and dedication. Without them, we do not play. Please say, please, if you have nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Sportsmanship is the key. Our officials, Joe Stafford, Bill Massey, Jacob Devine, Angie Gaffon, and Danny Jemez. By the way, one yard there for Riley Kinnett. This time trips to the near side. They'll work between the hash marks. Aiden Ortega, 15 to 25 this year, 206 yards. Kinnett will get the carry again, and there's just not much there. He might get to the 23-yard line before he's stacked up on his second carry of the ball game. Boy, he almost popped out of there, but, boy, nice job by the def defensive line. Number 72 for Ron Colley made the nice tackle. 72 is Nathan Turner. Big fella inside. Ron Colley gave up just last week defensively 20 points to a good Franklin Central team. So you pretty much know they're going to be very good. They're showing blitz right now with all four linebackers. And now one will peel back. Ortega on third down and long over the middle. And just behind Harrison Forrestal falls incomplete. And the punting unit will come on the field. Yeah, nice pass. A little bit behind, as you said. Hard to get the ball in. First, third down, now turnover for a fourth down. So we will see the Ron Colley offense for the first time tonight. And that's good news for Ron Colley, correct? And they're going to get good field position right here. Number 25, Sam Roeder. Roeder standing inside his own 40-yard line and before the punt sails away. And it was a good one, by the way. The official will the, throw the flag. And that back judge threw the flag, so it has to be somewhere illegal substitution and is that on Chittard that's a really good question because if this is on Roncalli that's a five yard penalty and it will be fourth down and one yeah I think it's too early to go for it but oh they're going to wave it off wow he recounted no hmm. counted 11 not 12 well it's better safe than sorry so we will do a <laughs> mulligan. Yes. It was an excellent punt the last time. Here comes the rush and Not another bad. good kick. Inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line. A wedge and a block up the right side. 50, 45, and finally driven down at the 39-yard line of Bishop Chittar did a great return. What a beautiful wedge. We saw it right up here formed, and then he took the, the blockers and just went uphill and did a nice job. Look at the replay here. Well, he Maybe, pretty much might out, have outran the coverage. Yeah, I was going to see how punted his coverage for sure. So it's going to be at the 39-yard line on their first possession for Ron Colley. Colin Ash... 5'10", 160, and a sophomore. 189 yards and a touchdown this season. He'll put his tight end and reset him from left to right. Ash 
A left-hander will throw out in the flat ball. Caught 40-35, 30, and brought down at about the 27-28 yard line. On the reception was Charlie Elsner, 6'3", 218, and a senior. I like the lefty's hand. Rolled out. Nice job. We may see some players that haven't, or at least were not, on the depth chart that we saw earlier this week and a run play to the 25. That'll be a gain of two. That last pass play was 12 yards. That'll be a gain of two to the 25. Both teams really have almost the same offensive scheme, Troy. They almost mirror each other pretty well. That was Brandenburg number 35 on the reception, or I should say on the carry. Little pitch, it'll be Brandenburg now to the right side, inside the 20 and then tripped up at the last moment. A player is down for Bishop Chittard. Keating on the, tr on the tackle saved the touchdown. That'll be a gain of five, Brandenburg his second carry. Take another look at it right here. There's the pitch. Yeah, it looked like that might be Colin Guy, who is a two-way player who went down, and that'd be a big loss right there. We'll take a timeout. No score here in period number one. We really focus on modern application development, DevOps, so automating the whole process of delivering your solution, and cloud architecture. It's very important uh, for large, mid to large companies to have cloud partners because you can't possibly have all the talent you need to address the complex ecosystem of the cloud. We advise them on all parts of their business. And then when things are defined and we see a clear goal, Cleanslate also then goes and does the work. We have a team that is very passionate about what they do. We love to solve complex problems, and there's a lot of companies out there that will avoid you know, getting involved in those things, and I think that's why clients like to work with us. Aspen Creek Grill, we are a from scratch concept with comfort fresh food. You can expect a, a world class experience on, on a great budget. We've got incredible specials, great service. Today's dish that we're going to highlight is going to be our Aspen Blue Sirloin. It is again our premium Black Angus certified beef and we top that with a blue cheese crust. Again, everything that we do here is made from scratch and it's no different from our steaks. We hand cut all our steaks in house. So our team back there, uh, is, it's just an incredible team. Everything that they do, they take so much pride in. They put a little bit of themselves into everything that they do over here, especially since it is a made from scratch concept. We want everybody to come visit us, enjoy some great food with some great service. Bring your friends, bring your family, come have some great food, have a great time with us with some of the best comfort scratch food. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Officially Human. Thanks to our officials for today's game and their hard work and dedication. Without them, we do not play. By the way, if you say something, try to be kind about it because bottom line, sportsmanship is everyone's job. And you see the sideline there, and it looks like Colin Guy is being helped off the field. He was down for quite some time, so we're not really sure what the injury was, but they'll take all the precautions in the world. And our prayers and thoughts are with him uh, and make sure that he's good and we'll check up on him. And if we get some notice up here before the end of the game, we'll pass that along. But I tell you what, the train, both training teams came out on the field immediately. Uh, officials did a good job of getting them on the field. That can, that can That's crucial. Good so job, officials. Good job. We'll see if he's going to certainly sit out for a while at you couldn't tell whether it was a shot to the head or not. It was Ron Colley. We'll give it to Brandenburg up the middle. He's going to get about three on that carry as they continue to run the football as we kind of expected. Hey, he's going to be short maybe a yard. Big fourth down here. 
You know, we'd mentioned a long yard. They had 222 rushing yards against Southport. Not very, in fact, only 129 last week. So you kind of compare the two. It's been apples and oranges, but that was a pretty good Franklin Central team they're up against. It'll be fourth down and one. And they will go ahead and go for it right here. Will it be Brandenburg again? The big running back got a push from his quarterback. Got a first down inside the 15 to about the 14-yard line. Needed one, got about four, didn't he? Uh, student body over to the Roncalli side, all in white. It's a white op. They have packed their stands. And over here, the Chittard, they don't surprise me at all. They got cowboy hats, baseball hats. Some guys are dressed like cows. Uh, it's a... So have a, no shirts on with painted numbers. Yeah, I'll tell you, it's, it's high school football. Football is at the 14-yard line. Brandenburg gets brought down. Coming in to make the stop, Eddie Benson, one of those fine linebackers there for Bishop Chittard. Going to lose three yards on the carry back to the 17. Brandenburg's already carried the football five times in this opening drive. Pendergast to the tight end coming out of the lineup. Two receivers to the right. One of those is Shotley. The other one is Sweezy, number two. Second down, 13. The opening drive here for the Royals. Ash looks to throw. Pomps now throws it out in the flat. Ball will be caught after being bobbled and then knocked out of bounds on the far side. That'll be 85 again, Elsner. How about catching the ball and then it hits your knees and pops it right out and you catch it, and you catch it right on the bounce? Got it back to the 13-yard line. That'll be a gain of four. Second reception now for Elsner. Play action here for Ash. Rolling near side. Throws. Ball caught inside the 10 and then brought down on the reception. That was number 18. His first reception of the ball game, Connor Kessler, only a sophomore. I tell you what, the the coverage is superior right now. Gain of six. Ash now three of three in the passing department. Going for it, fourth down. Woo, this yeah. is crucial. Yeah, fourth down and two. Put the football again at the seven yard line, and they got the Trojans to jump. The penalty will go against Bishop Chittard, and that'll get him a first down. Yep. Now you got four downs to get the touchdown. Going to put the ball right at, looks like the three. So it'll be first and goal now for Ron Colley. Chance to get ahead here in this big time rivalry. Brandenburg the handoff, and he gets stuffed. Wow. He might get to the six or maybe the five if they give him a nice spot right there. So it's okay. going to be a loss of one. I'm just giving that to the defensive line for the tackle. Benson. Yeah, they're going to give it to Benson. Take another look, look at it. Look at this. He snuffed that one out big time. Mm. Picked him up. Well, there's no better linebackers, four linebackers. You talk about Tremaine Benson, Perica, and Feeney. Then what you have in Bishop Shatari, it'll be second down and goal from the five. Ash the pitch. Brandenburg around the right side. Dives ahead. Gets to about the one-yard line. And this is taking time off the clock here, Troy. This is almost the Shatari offense right here. Brandenburg now his seventh carry. It'll be at the one. This is now the 11th play of this drive. And two fourth down plays yeah. on this drive. One of them converted on that penalty moments ago. Sweezy, the lone receiver to the far side. Near side once again will be Kessler. Brandenburg resets to the right. Ash fakes the handoff, rolls around the right side, goes in from one yard out, and Ron Colley leads it six to nothing. Great fake to Brandenburg, and Ash, his first carry of the night, good enough for a touchdown. That's a pretty impressive drive. That yeah, was a very impressive, and really traveled distance. 
Yeah, they went uh, started it at their own 39-yard line. So it goes 61 yards on 12 plays. And here's a young man with a great leg in Whistler. And he just line drives that kick through the uprights. That went to the soccer field, uh, the uh, softball field. 531, opening period, 7-0, Ron Colley. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. My name is Jay Jones. I'm the commissioner of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, and we appreciate you tuning in to tonight's game. We hope you'll stay tuned to SRN for tomorrow's Heartland Conference Game of the Week, showcasing some of the best small college football in the Midwest. We look forward to seeing you then. Tonight's game brought to you in part by Tam's Sweet and Savory Cafe. Great food for breakfast, lunch, and they have delicious baked goods. Make sure you check out their daily specials. They're open from 8 to 2 every Tuesday through Sunday. Located at 6427 Oakland and Road. You got a shot of the Ron Colley student section. They're here in force, and I believe we've about filled every seat now. Yes, it's, uh, it's pretty well full. All right. Bishop Chittard will get the football back. They had to punt it their last time up. This kick will stay in the playing field, and so there will be a return across the 20. Hard hit on special teams out to about the 23-yard line. That was way bright on the return. Take another look at the touchdown right here by Ash. A.J. Richardson got the tackle on special teams, and that was all really because of the fake to the fullback there. All, all decide and run. Yeah. Football at the 24-yard line. Aiden Ortega, will they have Colin Guy for the rest of this game? He is still on the sidelines, so he will not be available at least at the moment. Here's Kinnett over the right side, out to about the 30. May even give him a spot to the 31-yard line. That'll be a gain of about six. They will officially put it at the 31. Kinnett now with 11 yards on just three carries. I got a stat for you, and I got to share this with you about last year's game. It was 17-14. Get to it here in a moment. Second down and four. Kinnett again finds a hole, gets the first down to the 35-yard line. That'll be a gain of four. Last year, Ron Colley ran 72 plays. And for Bishop Chittard, they ran 34. <laughs> Ron Colley had the football 33 minutes, 57 seconds. Bishop Chittard had it 14, yet it was 17-14 the final. Wow. Crazy. That's just how these games are, though. You just never know. First and 10, football at the 35. Ortega nice throws break. out on the flat ball, caught at the 40. That'll be a gain of about five on the pass play. Nice, nice catch. Caught that right in the sun. I mean, that's kind of hard to do right there. Across our way, our, our buddy Jimmy Cook across the way in the Disney press box doing the radio broadcast tonight. Yeah. I told him I would mention that, you know, Jimmy used to work for Indiana SRN. Hope he has a great broadcast. That was Barraza on the reception of five yards. That's his first of the night. It'll be second down and five. Handoff Kinnett tried to get to the outside, and he did a great job just to get back to the line of scrimmage. He took a shot early, stayed on his feet, and actually gained a yard out of that. He did get a yard out of that. Wow. Wow. I have a feeling that they're going to really focus on Riley Kinnett tonight and, and make Aiden Ortega throw the football. You know, but Buff tried that too, and they wore him. They wore Buff out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that offensive line, Campbell, Troy, Wright, Woods, and Ortega, they had a heck of a night. Kinnett had over 300 yards, and I didn't have that same kind of production last week against Indianapolis Tech, but he didn't play the entire game either. Ortega to throw, looking over the middle. Ball caught. That's going to be Forrestall down to the 47-yard line. 
of Ron Colley. That's the old post play, Troy. He goes uh, five yards, six yards to the post. Caught it on the angle, gained about 13 yards. Nice put, nice. Defensive coverage is there. Just nice catch. Throw that right between two guys. Yeah. Nice throw. 17 yards officially on the pass play to the 47-yard line of Ron Colley. Ron Colley plays with that three-man front. That'll be a run around the left side by Kinnett. Another first down. Looks like he's going to get about 11 on that one down to the 36-yard line. That time when Riley hit that hole, he just accelerated. Nice job. And this is exactly, Shatar did this against Brebuff. Slow, and then it came to him. So now Bishop Shatard at the 36-yard line. This their deepest, only their second possession. Kinnett up the middle, inside the 30, getting big chunks down to the 26, and that's going to be another first down. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Just give him the ball. And that's, again, that's what they did against Burbuff. Just feed him all night long. He had like 36 carries that night. And without the services of Colin Guy still yet, they have taken the helmet away. So he's done. So now they'll do it without one of their best receivers. Four wide. Kinnett again. Big hole left side. 20. Cut back. Still on his feet. Finally brought down at around the 17, maybe 16-yard line. See where they spotted. That might be very close to another first down. They're going to say nine on the carry, so it'll be second down and one. Colin is actually looking for his helmet, and now talking to a manager saying, where's my helmet? Trips near side. Bishop Chatard trying to tie the ball game here in the opening period of play. Kinnett stays in as the lone setback. He'll get the call again up the middle. Gets to about the 14-yard line, so that'll be a gain of about two. And it will be good enough for a first down. Nathan Turner, you hear the public address announcer giving Turner credit for the tackle. Coming up on one minute remaining here in this opening quarter of play. Second possession now for Bishop Chatard. Trips near side. Kinnett stays in. High snap. Hand off Kinnett. Nowhere to go this ah, time. Try to go outside. Couldn't get there. Brandenburg, the linebacker there to make the stop, and they'll put it back to the 17. That'll be a loss of three. Roncalli snuffed this one out. Look at this. Look at the – he stayed home. Boy, if you're watching at home and you're playing football, that's exactly what you want to do. Stay home. Do not get faked out on that run. By the way, Brandenburg 11 – Total tackles coming into this ball game. He and J.J. Pendergast double figures in total tackles with 11 and 15 respectively. It'll be second down and 13 football at the 17-yard line. Ortega now will take it himself. Finds a hole up the middle inside the 15. Down inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. Let's see where they spot the football. They will put it at the 8. Yes. That's a 9-yard carry by Ortega. They could run out the clock here. I don't think they're going to run another play. And they're going to let this one run out, and we're going to walk to the other end. Chatard on the drive, but they trail it 7 0. At Morales Group Staffing, we are all about building better futures. And during these times, we are working hard to put people to work. We are now hiring for hundreds of jobs with pay up to 17 an hour. Visit our website at moralesgroup.net or text JOBS, J-O-B-S, to 317-472-7600 to apply now and get hired today. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you want. This is a player who wants to play really bad. He told the trigger, hey, I'm fine. Where's yeah. my helmet? 
Then the trainer goes, no, you're not fine. The doctors are over here still talking. <laughs> but you notice how close he's staying with the trainer? And he goes, but where's my helmet? Where's my helmet? Great job by the training team. And this is directed by the coaches. Good job. And they're not going to let him play. They're not going to clear him until they know that they know that they know. Well, he said he's fine. I always tell my doctor I'm fine. Yeah. Well, you know, Matthew Stein, when he played for Butler yeah. back in the day and he got his concussion, he said he was fine. He doesn't even remember the game. <laughs> in fact, he didn't even remember playing for Butler. <laughs> All right, it'll be third down. Football at the eight-yard line as we begin period number two. Here's the keeper by Ortega. Dodges by one defender into the end zone. And a touchdown from eight yards out. It's 7-6. They go 11 plays on that drive. So we've had a 12 play and an 11 play drive by each of these two teams. Ortega. His second carry now, 17 yards. And the extra point attempt is on the way. And Chapman, perfect. 11.55, period number two. We're tied at seven. From warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Well, that's kind of drive we're used to seeing out of Bishop Shatari. Yeah, and you know, no penalties in that play. Didn't fumble the ball, did a nice job, and took the time off the clock. By the way, an official 11 plays, 76 yards on the drive, and Ron Colley will get it back. There will be a return. That's going to be Brandenburg. Whoa! He gets flipped up at the 20-yard line, or should say 30-yard line. Looked like number 34, Eddie Benson of special teams made the big hit. <laughs> That's who I had, Eddie Benson, six foot. Here we go. Here's the touchdown. Yeah, you're going to see Ortega here just take off to the left. And everybody was surprised, even our camera person. Sometimes just you got it, Troy, because I was looking in the middle of the huddle as well. What's the wall? It's a great fake, isn't it? I tell you. That's what quarterbacks do. So we're going to start the drive here at the 31, second possession for Ron Colley. Colin Ash. As Dominic Morelli is the lone receiver to the near side, the work between the hash marks. They look to the sidelines. Will they make a play change right here? They do, and they're going to run the football. Nothing there. We're going to talk about a loss of a yard on this one. But Troy, that play, the play clock was down to two. He did a do, needed to do something. They actually, say they're going to. It's actually only loss of one. I know they said loss of two, but it's actually going to be second down and 11. Dozier got the call, number nine. So it'll be second down. Ash to throw out in the flat. Ball will be caught by the big tight end once again down to the 35-yard line. This guy's been busy. That's Elsner. He fumbled the ball out of bounds, but they counted it as a catch and kept him inbounds and runs the clock. That's great defense. That's his third reception. By the way, Ash is a perfect four of four in oh, the passing department. Now you're doing it. Jinxing him? Yeah, you yeah. just did. Football will be at the 35-yard line. Elsner will reset to the left, hash mark left. They'll fake the handoff. 
Ash to throw near sideline, and yep, there's your first incomplete pass. I tell you what, James Guthrie was wide open at the 40. This didn't have time to throw it to him. Send that hate mail to Troy Derigowski. <laughs> It's going to be fourth down, and they'll have to punt the football away. That pass was intended for Christian Sweezy, the 6'2", 200-pound senior. First time he's been targeted tonight. So he had to punt the football. Oh, off the side of his foot. Yeah, Whistler didn't hit that one well at all. Rolls out of bounds at the 40. Good field position here for Bishop Chittard. So three possessions here tonight for Ron Colley. Willow Mission Thrift Store, Bargain Hunters, Treasure Seekers, we have a place for you. Visit our stores at 8640 East 96th Street in Fishers. And thank you for helping us do our mission. So football at the 40. Should say only two possessions for Ron Colley. This will be the third possession now for Bishop Chittard. Ortega, play action pass, here they come. Almost lost the football, still on his feet. Able to get away from pressure, but then brought down from behind. He's gonna lose a yard back to the 39. Boy, he had him open in the flat. Just didn't have enough time. That is counted as a sack, because he loses one yard. Second down and 11. Both these defense are playing, got their ears pure pin back. Well, they got so many good linebackers. You talk about, we already mentioned the four there for Bishop Shatari, but you got Henry, Brandenburg, Pendergast, and Babcock, and that 3-5 there for Ron Colley. They and, are very good. And in that situation, you're just looking to survive. Yeah. They'll stack receivers to each side. Hash mark to the left. Quick hitter near side. Ball caught. 45. They're going to say, wait a minute. It might have hit the ground. Now, I know there's some talking going on, but at the time, Sam Roeder did not know that ball had hit the ground, and it's an incomplete pass. It was intended that time for Jack Stedham. Here we go. And I can't tell by our vantage point either. Yeah, but see, well, think about it. I don't think, I know he got hit late, but Roeder didn't hear anything. He thought the play was still live. And Rotor slowed down a little bit, too, which would tell you that the official got it right. A little bit of time to get this playoff. In fact, the play clock says zero unless Bishop Chittard was able to get a timeout. And looks like they did right before the play clock expired. 9.38, period two. We're tied at seven. Aspen Creek Grill, we are a from scratch concept with comfort fresh food. You can expect a, a world class experience on, on a great budget. We've got incredible specials, great service. Today's dish that we're going to highlight is going to be our Aspen Blue Sirloin. It is again our premium Black Angus certified beef and we top that with the blue cheese crust. Again, everything that we do here is made from scratch and it's no different from our steaks. We hand cut all our steaks in house. So our team back there, uh, is, it's just an incredible team. Everything that they do, they take so much pride in. They put a little bit of themselves into everything that they do over here, especially since it is a made from scratch concept. We want everybody to come visit us, enjoy some great food with some great service. Bring your friends, bring your family, come have some great food, have a great time with us with some of the best comfort scratch food. Well, the Trojans had to get a timeout right there. As the Dodged that ball, was, didn't they? Yeah, they were down. To, in fact, when I looked up, it, it was zero. So they apparently got it before the play clock expired. Trips to the right. Big third down and 11 at their own 39-yard line. The throw by Ortega, and it's going to be knocked down at the 50-yard line. Excellent defensive play. There for Ron Colley. Looked like that was number four. That was Heimlich, the corner. So, 
fourth down and 11. I'm sure the punt team is coming in. They are. Ortega unofficially now two of five for 22 yards in the passing department. Indiana SRN starts their college football season tomorrow. Franklin versus University of Olivet. Manchester at North Park and DePaul, Rose Hallman, all three on the family of network, IndianaSRN.org. Yeah, but the number one team is in Franklin tomorrow. <laughs> the other guys can listen and we'll show them how to do it. That one's going to be blocked. Getting it back will be the punter and a big time block from behind, but that's going to be a flag. Brandenburg got drilled at about the 32 yard line. And the flag came out immediately. And it was Brandenburg who, by the way, got the block of the punt, I do believe. They may call this blindside hit. Yeah. Well, never had a chance to get his head turned around. This is a tough call to me, Troy, just because I think that was a real good hit. I think this hit that was here on the ground where the kid was going down in contact there could have been that personal foul there you see blind side oh yes against Chitar. no against Roncalli well I'm not sure he pointed wrong way didn't yeah he, he did and that's confusing to a, the fans as well boy there was nobody there's the high snap there's the punt here's the I don't know Troy that those are t those are just tough. I, I can't you, know, you, you can't follow the officials. You got to keep the the players safe. Yeah. So, and we got do we have a timeout? Well, Ron Colley heading to the sidelines like they're acting like there's a timeout right here. Bishop Chatard has not gone to the sidelines, so we wait. Well, Coach Coach Doyle just came on the field and is asking. A question. Well, the good news is we'll let them all decide when they rewatch it. And football let, is at the 29. By when the way. we talk about high, college football, the HCAC home of Indiana is the home. Indiana SRN is a home of HCAC. A lot of coaches watching these Friday night games that we're broadcasting. We do. How about this one? You're, you're ready, ready for you're this? You're going to do this one? Sure, I'll do this one. Piper Logistics, from warehouse to transportation, everything in between, we do it all. Three services, one solution. Contact them at 317-396-1023. Piper Logistics. Now I think, because the official pointed toward Roncalli. Yeah. Which means that it should have been a 15 penalty yard penalty for Chittard, which means Chittard should have got a first down. Blind side block. Well, they're putting it at the 44-yard line, but it's going to be Ron Colley football. And they declined the penalty. Hmm. Hmm. All right, first down, Colin Ash. The handoff right side and a tough run of about four, maybe three. On the carry. Number 37, that'll be Benish. Sam Feeney on the tackle. So they will say three yards for Benish coming off a game in which he was able to carry the football 11 times. 52 yards on the season. Second down and seven. From the 41, Ash to throw in the air. It's incomplete. Great pressure put on the quarterback by Ryan Keating. I tell you what, one more step, that ball straight up in the air. Good defense here, third down. Ash, after completing his first four, that's his second incomplete. He got hit right when he released it. And I do believe you said he was four for four when he yeah. uh, has. Yep. Four for four for, what, 12, 24, 26 yards, but two straight incompletes. Football still at the 41-yard line. Open in the flat. Right quick, there he is. Yep, quick hitter, near side, and it's going to be caught 
once again by the tight end, Elsner. Did he get enough for the first down? Looks like he's going to be short at the 36. Keen stopped him at the knees. Big down. Elsner, four receptions. Did you say fourth and a long one? Maybe two? I'm going to call it a two. Okay. Yeah, fourth down and two. Football at the 36-yard line. Dash will check the sidelines. Brandenburg, the lone setback. Brandenburg, a couple of touchdowns this season. Brandenburg gets the call, and the big back gets inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. And they snap that ball with one second left on the play clock. That's three very tough yards right there for Brandenburg, but good enough for the first down. He's like a, like a bowling ball. Mm. He is 6'1", 200 pounds, so he is a load. Nice kid. First down and 10. Hand off near side, oh. nothing there. How about that play? <laughs> he read that all the way. Sam Feeney read that from the line of scrimmage. I think that's Keating. Yeah, taking a Was look at it. Might have been Keating coming up to make the stop. Yep. Say no gain. My apologies. He's psych. So it'll be second down and 10. Yards are hard to come by. Trips to the left, hash mark right. Tight end will reset. Ash to throw, takes a hit over the middle and in and out of the intended receiver's hands. It falls incomplete. Christian Sweezy targeted there. And I tell you, Troy, the defense of Chittard is getting a little bit quicker on that line of scrimmage. Again, got close to getting a sack there. Fourth and is this fourth? No, third down. Did our producer just say quad coverage? I guess he did. Wow. Wow. When did he? Is Where he, did he go to school? You know, Ben's a little underneath the weather. Maybe he should be doing what Ben should be no doing tomorrow. Kidding. Football at the 33. Third down in 10. And Ash lost it. A scramble for the football. Bishop Chittard will take over. That was a shovel pass. Well, uh, uh, I guess a lateral because it went backwards. I think he's lost it. Did he lose it? Oh, yeah, just lost it out of his hands. Good call, Troy. Thank you. Football you, at the 32. You should do this for a living. Am, am I gonna? Am I gonna get a raise? Well, oh no. But <laughs> all I know is if I hear a quad one more time, I'm gonna be. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. pretty impressed. Oh, me too. <laughs> so big turnover. First turnover of the ball game. Handoff to Kinnett, and he might even lose a yard here. Halfway through this. There. Halfway through this first quarter with the score tied. Thank you for joining us on Indiana SRN. If you'd like to see more football, contact us, coach at indianasrn.org. We can work out some things on your budget. Well, after I found out I'm not getting a raise after the spectacular job I'm doing tonight, eh? <laughs> That's really good, Troy. Forest Star will reset to the right. Pass to the flat, and it's going to be caught at about the 40, but he goes down on one knee. We'll put it at the 39-yard line. I tell you what, these officials are really good because that kid slid, and he just popped right back up really quick like, no, I, my knee's in Dutch. Here, here, watch this. That this was, is great play right that's here. That's Barraza, by the way. Slides right there, got his knee, and then yeah. what, what are you talking about, ref? I did fine. Good call, ref. Barraza, his second reception of the night. It'll be third down and about four. Football again placed at the 39-yard line. And I think the Trojans want to talk about it. So a timeout, 5.35 to go here in period two. We're tied at seven.
Calling officials cheaters or corrupt, it's not a game. Insulting referees, it's not a game. Threatening officials, it's not a game. Berating young umpires, learning the ropes, it's not a game. Violent language in the stands, it's not a game. Verbal abuse from the sideline, it's not a game. Screaming at a referee in the parking lot, it's not a game. Did you want to do another read? I do, but I will play till this play. <laughs> You're you at Chittard High School in Chittard and Roncalli. You were chomping at the bit right there. I was ready. Football to the 39, third down and three. Big play right here, perhaps, for Bishop Chittard. Artega, two receivers to the left. Play action pass, ball caught by Forstall. At the 45-yard line, that'll be a first down. How about that? That was a little bit behind him, and he went and slid to get that, went and sat down. Look, look at this. This is how you used to catch him back at Richmond High School. Yeah. Well, if I went to Richmond, I would have. Football at the 45. You mean you don't have eligibility yet? <laughs> Let? Not at Richmond, oh, okay. no. So big first down, Forstall, his second reception, 23 yards. Trips right. Middle of the hash marks. Ortega, quick release. Forstall, did he make the catch? No, that'll fall incomplete. There is Ben Brandenburg again, the two-way player. And, boy, he's been a factor of both sides and of the football. And, you know, he, he had three receivers in that one area. I wonder if there was a miss assignment there because he had three guys right in that same area. Stops the clock at 5.07. It was 17 to 14 last year, and the way we're going right now, we may not see much more than a 17-14 final. Football at the 45. Kinnett gets the carry, gets about five on that one. Here's an upset Bruin. Yorktown nine, New Pow zero in the second quarter. You think that's an upset? Yorktown's pretty good. Yeah. They, they, they are pretty good. Yeah, they're aren't they in the top ten? Yes, they are. Yeah. New pal, though, if they go to 0-3, huh? That'd be it. Sassina leads Covenant Christian 7-3 at the end of one. Third down and five. Football right at midfield here for Aiden Ortega. Kanet, the lone setback just to his right. Three receivers to the bottom. Ortega swings it out. Kanet at the 45. First down. Breaks a tackle. 40 up the sideline. Finally driven out of bounds. Near the 30. We'll call it 29. Nice play, nice read. Take another look at it. Little, almost like a little screen. Nice block, downfield blocking. Nice job. Ooh, got hit maybe a little bit out of bounds. You know what I like about Ortega, though? It was a quick release. Yes, I mean, he sir. knows he's got to get rid of the football, and he did. Put the football at the 29-yard line. Gain of 21 on that pass play. Under center is Ortega. Handoff Kinnett trying to bounce to the outside. Not this time. 44 grabbing hold of the ankle. A.J. Richardson, and he did not let go. A.J. 5'11", 165, a junior. By the way, Kinnett, 13 carries here tonight. So now it'll be second down and nine. This is now the eighth play of this drive. We're going to, at least at this point, try not to give Ron Colley any opportunity to get the football back. Way bright to the near side. Handoff up the middle to the 25, maybe 24. It'll be Kinnett again on the carry. Yeah, you know, they, they have the, the time... They're not, they're not in a hurry. No, they are not. Uh, this is the way Chittard has played for years. And, by the way, still playing without Colin Guy. One of their leading receivers got hurt in the first quarter. Yeah, 
he's up and down the sideline from what we understand from our producer still pleading his case. Low snap, Ortega looks over the middle. Ball caught inside the 15 to the 14-yard line. That'll be way bright on the carry, or on, should say on the catch, should be a first down. You know, talking about guy, any player that wants to play this game as bad as he does, you would be doing that as well. You would say, Coach, I'm fine. But, the, again, coaches did a great job taking that helmet away from them, and they, they know better right now. Well, you're a senior. It's a big rivalry game. You want to play. Maybe he'll come back in the second half. First down here for Bishop Chittard. Handoff Kinnett runs right into some big bodies over the right side. Might get a yard out of it. Just wasn't much there. They can snap this ball under the two-minute mark, Troy. 15 carries now for Riley Kinnett. He had well over 30 in the game against Brebuff. Second down in nine. That's way bright. Split wide to the left. Kinnett will now set up to the left of Ortega. Forrestal, the tight end is to the right. Play action pass, Ortega over the middle, tipped in the air. Great defensive play. That was number 44 again. A.J. Richardson able to knock it down. He's made a couple big plays in, in this game today. If you're looking at timeouts, Ron Colley has three timeouts left in this first half. Shatar just won. Mike. Jack Stedham, by the way, coming in now for Bishop Shatar. So it'll be third down and nine, football at the 13. Four receivers split evenly to each side. Kinnett, the lone setback. Ortega will throw to the end zone. Cut! Touchdown! Touchdown! And guess who? Number seven, Roman Barraza. What a great catch. And Bishop Jatard takes the lead with 149 remaining here before halftime. Very impressive. We'll see that replay. Barraza, his third reception. The extra point is good. Take a look at this touchdown pass right here. Boy, caught that at the height of the cat of the pass. 149 remaining before the half. 14-7, Bishop Chittard. My name is Jay Jones. I'm the commissioner of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, and we appreciate you tuning in to tonight's game. We hope you'll stay tuned to SRN for tomorrow's Heartland Conference Game of the Week, showcasing some of the best small college football in the Midwest. We look forward to seeing you then. Hey Indiana, let's clear the air about vaping. Glue, rat poison, paint. We all know these products contain poisons like formaldehyde, arsenic, and lead. And these are just a few of the chemicals you'll find in e-cigarette vapor. Let's clear the air, Indiana. Don't puff this stuff. Visit don'tpuffthisstuff.com to join the fight and spread the word. Well, Ron Colley will get the football with less than two minutes remaining here in the first half. And it looks like it'll be Brandenburg from his own three. Across the 10, tripped up on special teams. What a great play. That is Sam Feeney right there, the linebacker, 6'2", 205, who, by the way, is getting some looks from your school, Purdue. Yes, he is. And I think that would be a great move for Purdue. Well, he's already got good size, and we know what kind of a linebacker well, how, he is. Look how fast he is, yeah. too. Yeah. Yep. Just think you put another 25 pounds on him, it would be 6'2", 235 or so. Mm. That's a big linebacker. Yes, sir. Football will be at the 13-yard line. But how about this conference with feeding school, Big Ten schools and ACC schools with good talent? Oh, yeah. I mean, Indiana is loaded with talent. 
It's a very underrated state when it comes to football. Ash will throw out in the flat, and it's dropped. Pass intended. I by, think, that's Dozier, by the way, on the flat. I think he was going to run before he caught the I ball. I think he was, yeah. That happened to me when I'm playing in street football with my granddaughters. And they're throwing to you. Well, I, I don't. My granddaughters do hit hard. <laughs> 11 year old fan, they hurt. <laughs> we call them bruisers. Second down and 10 now for Ron Colley. Dozier gets the call to about the 15 yard line, gain of two. I got a call from my oldest grandson. And Troy wants to go into radio TV broadcasting. He wanted to know if I know any, knew anybody in radio TV broadcasting. You said no, right? I told him to send a resume. <laughs> 118 to go. I think Ron Colley with third down and eight. Don't want to make a mistake here. They might be just happy to try to run as much time off as they can. Punt the football and then go into the locker room. They'll get the football to begin the third quarter. Ash again out of the shotgun. Hash mark on the right side. Dozier got the call, and he got buried immediately. Matt Woods, the nose guard, met him and met him rudely. Guess who called a timeout? Shatard. And they should. Yep. Their last timeout. Football's at the 14. That'll be a loss of a yard for Dozier. He's having a tough night. And if carrying you, the football. You know, you punt the ball here, you get good field position. You got 51 seconds, you got a good field. Maybe at 30, you got a couple plays. Maybe go to the end zone a couple times or get in some field goal range. A field goal would be huge right here. Well, they got a good kicker. We've seen Chapman, the senior. I'd say if you get, I mean, right now, you're in field goal range here. But again, depending on. What happens with Ron Colley? They did not get a good punt off the last time. Yeah, he got about 15, 16 yards the last time. Even at a 16, let's say 25-yard punt, you just you need one big play to probably get in field goal range. So the putter will come on. We mentioned the punt last time. This is also, you remind your receiver, you use the fair catch if you need to. Yeah. Whistler will punt it away. High snap. Oh, oh, almost got it. Man, that was close. There's the fair catch. And that will be at the 47. Boy, that's textbook right there. Yep. So if I'm quarterback here, or if I'm Coach Doyle, <laughs> trust me, I'm not. But if I'm Coach Doyle, I run a flat or a post to the sidelines, get me down to at least a 25, I feel pretty comfortable. All right, let's find out, okay. Coach Myers. Well, let's like see. I said, I'm not Coach Doyle, so don't send me hate mail. I won't. Coach Doyle, don't call me tomorrow morning. <laughs> Thanks, you. Football to 48. Kinnett in the backfield. Ortega to throw swing past Kinnett. Here comes the pressure. Gets by the defender. 45-40. It'll be a gain of about eight on the pass play. Don't need to hurry. Get back to the line of scrimmage. Boy, I tell you what, 72 just blocked his man right out of the gymnasium. Kinnett, his second reception, we'll call that seven. This one is in the air and over the intended receiver. That yeah, was intended for Barraza, who just caught the touchdown pass. Andrew Troy in the last play, Troy, took his defender about 15, 16 yards down the field. Mm. I think he was blocking. I think so. Yes, sir. Okay, 17 seconds. Still got two plays. I tried another one. Okay. I, I would, I've tried. Ortega had a good arm, had a good throw. And Barraza had his man, just kind of hurried it a little bit. Whistles will stop play again. Timeout, Ron Colley. And Ron Colley again, yep, they'll call the timeout. We'll take a quick timeout as well. 14-7, Trojans on top. Can't make it to the game? We've got your back. Just go to www.indianasrn.org and tune in to all of the live action or go to our on-demand service and relive your favorite moments. 
We never really realize how much we depend on electricity until the power goes out. Get those lights back on when you choose the certified electricians at Burtner Electric Incorporated. Locally owned and operated, we are a member of the Better Business Bureau and provide only the highest quality of customer service. For more information, give us a call today. We encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Indiana SRN. Hit the bell to get notifications for upcoming games and more. Watch as many games as you want, as many times as you Football is at the 40. After the timeout by Ron Colley, let's see what Bishop Chatard has in store at third down and two. RPO, the throw is short. Mm. Stedham, the intended receiver. So for Ortega, his 15th pass attempt tonight. He has only 25 on the season. It'll be fourth down and two, and probably at this stage, you just go ahead and go for it right here. Well, you got time to run. Do you have enough time to down it, though? Because you, no. you have no timeouts left. I don't think you have enough time. Because depending how far down field is you got to get those big linemen down to get your kicker out there I think you go for the end zone here or just try to run it out trips right hash mark left fourth down and two and a whistle will stop play and believe it or not Ron Colley will call the timeout because they only have 10 guys on the field right that time Troy one two three four five six seven eight nine I count ten hmm. well that would warn that a timeout would warn a timeout by the way, tonight's game brought to you in part by the Morales Group, building better futures one story at a time. They have locations in Indianapolis, Zionsville, Anderson, Columbus, and Lafayette. Contact them for more information at 317-472-7600. Morales Group, a proud sponsor of high school football in Indiana SRN. Hey, football fans, if you like football, college football, I know Matthew is going to a wedding, and he said he's got his phone set for all three games tomorrow on Indiana SRN. Franklin versus University of, Iowa, uh, of Olivet, that's yeah. a one thirty start. Manchester North Park, that's a 6 o'clock start. And DePaul and Rose Hallman, the Battle of Terre Haute mm. uh, or Greencastle uh, at 7 o'clock. So tune in, HCAC, this is where you can catch the action. By the way, uh, what wedding are we talking about tomorrow? I think friends? it's just his friends. He's you, not getting married. You need to remind him about the three rings of yeah, marriage. there you go. All right, here we go. Fourth down and two football at the 40-yard line. They try to draw David Wilson in the middle there off sides. Ortega will keep Kinnett in the lineup just to his right. Ortega hands off Kinnett. Big hole, 35-30, and brought down at about the 28-yard line. Nine seconds remaining. They're going to spike it right here. And they will call the timeout after that gain of 12. They do have a chance here, as you see that run again by Kinnett. Look how quickly they got up. The clock stops because of, change of, because of the first down. And then he slam dunked it. It's second down. And they still have him as first down. And now the officials are talking. This has to be second down. I didn't think they got up there and got set in time to spike the football. He, he, they did, though. Hmm. So this has to be second down. Well, they still have first down on the board. They have first down on the field. So we will have to keep it at first down. Trips left. Ortega still has nine seconds remaining. Kinnett in the backfield. Ortega to throw. Steps up in the pocket. Now fires down the middle. Ball's going to be caught at the five and then brought down at about the one-yard line. One second remaining. Gain of 27. Way bright will be the reception making the reception and I don't think they're going to have time right there to spike it and do anything. There's not tenths of the clock or hundreds of seconds on the clock. Halftime. Yep. 
They tried, but Way Bright, his second reception, and they get nothing out of it as we head to the locker room. Good effort, though, by Bishop Chittard. But we're at halftime. Well, what we kind of thought was going to happen, good start there for Ron Colley. And then Bishop Chittard, after a slow start, they come back, get a couple of scores, and lead it here at halftime 14-7. to seven. So I guess really at this stage, no big surprises, but we still have a ball game. You look at the keys, though, controlling the line of scrimmage, Ron Colley, Chittard is definitely doing that now. The red zone only allowed them to score one. Pressure on the quarterback, I think he went four for four. He's lost. Uh, he's uh, been three incomplete since. Uh, the quick start for Ron Colley, but the ball control, man, it, it's, it's a typical Ron Colley Chittard game, right? Well, last year was all Ron Colley when it came to time of possession, and they still lost 17-14. So we'll take a timeout. We'll come back. Our halftime guest is coming up in a few moments. We'll also run down some of the first half numbers if we get an opportunity to do so. Trojans lead at 14-7. Thinking about what to do after high school? Consider a career with Boilermakers Local 374. As a Boilermaker apprentice, you'll earn while you learn. We offer excellent wages and benefits, and as part of our no-cost hands-on apprenticeship program, you'll learn from the best in state-of-the-art training centers and on the job. Become a union Boilermaker and get on your way to a great career. Find out more, visit www.local374.org or call 219-845-1000. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter at Indiana SRN. Find upcoming games, video highlights, and much more. Follow us now at Indiana SRN. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Electric Incorporated is fully licensed and bonded electrical contractor for your protection. Our electricians are available 24-7 for service calls and specialize in electrical service and storm damage repair. For more information, give us a call today. My name is Jay Jones. I'm the commissioner of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, and we appreciate you tuning in to tonight's game. We hope you'll stay tuned to SRN for tomorrow's Heartland Conference Game of the Week, showcasing some of the best small college football in the Midwest. We look forward to seeing you then. HCAC right here on Indiana SRN tomorrow. Three big games for you again. Franklin and University of Olivet. Manchester, North Park, and DePaul, Rose Holman. You know a little bit about the Rose Holman DePaul rivalry, don't you, Coach? A little bit, and we've got some guys, uh, nobody on Rose Holman's team this year, but we've had some players go there. We've had some at DePaul right now, so yeah. Yep. Mike Carmen, the assistant athletic director, baseball coach, and uh, uh, fence repair guy. <laughs> Today when I got here, he was uh, repairing some fences. Pretty good first, first half. Well, we settled in, yeah. It was not a great start for us going three and out, and then um, – costly penalty on defense on a fourth and three but settled in there and started moving the ball a little bit better and uh got connect going a little bit and uh ortega a few completions but yeah i mean you knew this was going to be a back and forth game fewest mistakes penalties turnovers etc usually favors the team that's going to win it so we'll see colin guy is begging to get on the field and they, yeah, took, they hit it, his helmet yeah they took the helmet which is not a good sign but i think he got the uh kind of knee 
Brandenburg's knee on his helmet when he went to make the tackle, and he was a little woozy coming off the field. I, I don't think we'll see Colin <laughs> the rest of the night. He was talking to everybody, though. I'm okay. I'm okay. Hey, I'm okay. Right. But so, yeah, I don't. Uh, he was wobbly coming off the field. Talk about the fall. It's been a pretty good fall season. It's been a good start. Yeah, we've got everybody underway. Obviously, cross country, volleyball, tennis, golf, football. Uh, so, yeah, pretty busy slate this weekend. Both teams, soccer teams, are at Garen tomorrow in a conference matchup. Um, so, yeah, it's been busy. Good start, but we're about three weeks into the school year. And we still hitting the baseball? We're allowed to go two days a week right now in our six-week open <laughs> field. This was the first week. So, yeah, we had some guys. We got a lot of guys playing a fall sport, which is fine, but the guys that aren't uh, took advantage of the good weather this week. Your buddy Dan Ambrose was out taking infield the other day. Was happy to see that. Yeah. It's nice to see baseball. Talk a little bit about the conference and the rivalry between certain amount of schools because it seems like everybody beats up on everybody in this conference. Uh, that's very obviously very competitive conference in all the sports. Um, I'm not trying to be unbiased here, but I think baseball top to bottom every year is, our conference is really solid because there's just good pitching. Every team's got good pitching, which means it's going to be uh, – a really good baseball conference every year, boys basketball. I mean, it's co it's very competitive in all the sports. Ron Colley volleyball this year is off to a really good start. Uh, yeah, you've got your normal rivalries that you had kind of before conference. Us and Ron Colley has been a long-time rivalry from the 70s for Buff and Bishop Chittard because of the north side, then when Garen opened. So there were some good rivalries to begin with. Uh, Conference-wise, though, it's very competitive in all the sports and all the schools, Heritage, Covenant, everybody's got good teams, so it's – uh, it's it's amped up a little bit, and I, I kind of laugh a little bit. We have a sportsmanship summit every year in the conference, <laughs> which is great, but <laughs> those are very heated contests every time we play conference opponent. I'm like, uh, uh, you know, they know each other. The kids know each other from grade schools. You get social media factored in there. So it gets chippy, uh, good good rivalries, but uh, very intense competition, let's say that. Yeah, you know, it is kind of funny to watch the, 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 the games because the intense rivalry – not only the players and the, the fans, but the coaches are a little bit of that, too. Oh, yeah. You, yeah you, a lot of people don't know this, but you're a graduate uh, of Bishop Chittard. Bishop Chittard, class of 84. Yep. Uh, we're actually celebrating our first state championship, which was the fall of 83. It was my senior year. 40-year anniversary this year, and I could uh, remember it like it was yesterday, but we're getting older. But Yeah, so I, I've in my 25th year working here, I really enjoy it. Enjoyed my time as a student here. Enjoyed my time as a coach and an employee. So, uh, it's a good community. The, and it's the growth, though, from 84 to now is uh, – Facilities have upgraded a little, little bit. A little but bit. you know what? We didn't know any better back then, and it's what we had. And you just got used to playing at Arlington for all your home football games and made do with what we had. But, yeah, it's uh, – it's, we're a little bit landlocked, but we've done, I think, the best we can do with the upgrading facilities and keeping a lot of contests at home on campus, which helps. And – the alumni group continues to grow. So, yeah, it's, things are heading in a good direction. Talk a little bit about your baseball field because there are colleges that use your diamond to early. Uh, I know Butler's right. played here. We've done yep. a couple of games of Butler's games that they have played here. Right. It, it, is that, does that relationship help you as a program and as the uh, schools? I mean, it's good for our guys to be able to come out and watch a little college baseball late February, early March to see, you know, if, if they aspire to play in colleges. Like, well, here's some – Here's what you got, and measure. how do you measure up against them? But uh, I coached for three years at Butler, so I knew that staff, and we were able to open up the field to get them over here in January and February some years when they are allowed to practice a little bit. Uh, and like I said, Ball State has played here. DePaul and Manchester play here every year. <coughs> Franklin, Coach Marshall, uh, has been able to bring his team up here. So, yeah, it certainly helps. Now, now <laughs> Coach Marshall, the new athletic director of Franklin College. Yeah, HCAC be. is part of our – coverage as we do college football uh and uh coach marshall will be in our boot tomorrow so i'm, I'm sure uh, i'll good. let him know you said hello yeah tell him he still owes us some rental for the last year <laughs> practicing up here now we're just kidding but it, it's good those those you know and when you have the turf and you get the snow off the field and they're able to get out here it certainly helps them it's a little better than practicing indoors in the winter and then you try to get out and play your first game and haven't been outside all year so 
Well, uh, it's fun to have the colleges up here. We're back in two weeks, so if you need some help, I'll get here early. I can help you with the gates. Not, not, not a problem. Yeah, I'm not very handy, but I will try to fix a lot of things, but sometimes I probably make them worse. Talk about the coverage of Indiana SRN. It's got to be helping you. It's now we're doing oh, a lot more for you guys. Right. Uh, not only in football, but, yeah, in the winter with basketball. I know you've been able to do some volleyball contests. But it's, it's great for alums. It's great for grandparents who can't make it if they live out of town, can't make it in. I mean, we get a healthy home crowd. But certainly I had three or four calls today from 2 o'clock on that say, hey, we can't make it. Is the game being streamed? Where's, where can we watch it? And boom, Indiana SRN will cover it and uh, gives them good coverage like they're right here watching the game, and it certainly helps. Um, you want to tell my producer what you called me when I walked in? <laughs> I forget what it was. Can we say it on air? Yeah. I forget what I Keith said. Keith Myers has arrived. Oh, yes, Keith announces his <laughs> presence with authority like Nuke Lelouch. Uh, <laughs> But he was here bright. And, he was here early, three hours before kick to get things set up. Got to get things set it's up. It's a well-oiled machine that they prepare very well for. So yes, appreciate you. Thanks, Keith. Thanks for having us on. We'll see you in two weeks. Okay. Okay. Stats coming your way in just a few minutes. We got Ray Morey coming on board with stats. Ray, we'll be back after this. To you. The stat man is with us, Ray. Hey, how are you? I'm good. I'm did you good. Mi- how are you, Keith? Did you miss us last week? I did. Yeah. I were, did. You at te- were you at Dubai? Oh, uh, yeah. Dubai? oh okay. yeah. How long have you been doing the stats here? 19 years. Yeah. Older I, than most of these kids. Well, all these kids, I yeah. guess. <laughs> Old hat. Uh, Ron Colley scored first uh, with Colin Ash on a one-yard run, made it 7-0. Then uh, Shittard scores two in the second. Ortega on an eight-yard run. Made it 7-7, and Rowan Bassey on a 13-yard pass made it 14-14. But you got more stats than that for us. I do. I do. For the Trojans, the uh, Russian yardies of 88 yards on 20 carries. For the Royals, 19 yards on 14 carries. In the passing department, the uh, Trojans have 97 yards on 8 of 16, whereas the Royals are 33 yards on four of nine so for a total of 185 yards for the trojans and 42 for the royals what a week has made a difference 92 degrees last week 80 warning the wind is blowing and where you are you get that little stiff breeze to, i don't know how you earn that spot but uh 19 years does it okay there you go so when i'm here 19 years later uh Chittard really came out a little flat don't you think right they did very similar to the first game of the year against Burbuff. So and uh, but this game is not far from over. I mean, no. last year was 17-14. Roncalli, uh, Troy was telling Roncalli ran 72 plays last year yes. and only scored 17 points. Chittard sco- had 35 plays and scored 14, made it 17-14. That's what kind of game this is tonight, yeah. too. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, last year it was very much a tie. Well, it was a tie game with like a minute to go, and Chittard fumbled the ball on a. Uh, on a completed pass at the 50-yard line and gave up a field goal with four seconds to go. So, Talk a little bit about the conference. You've been around long enough. Do you enjoy – you watch the, watch the conference. Pretty so- solid conference right here. In oh, absolutely, absolutely. A lot of fun. The fans are great when we have – whether we're playing here or we're playing at Guerin or wherever, it's, it's great fan support. And the kids do a great job too. You notice that we've got heck of a kid – a student population here today. Yeah, a lot of cowboy hats, a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of cowboys, a lot of cows down here as well. I, when the Smurfs came out last uh, two weeks ago, I I think that <laughs> topped it all. Finally, you you made note of this that, that the Heartland Conference is playing here on Indiana SRN. We got three big games tomorrow. 
You can. You don't even have to stay home. You can just I, stay home. I can just stay here and don't even leave, right? Franklin and University <laughs> of Olivet, uh, North Point, and Manchester, and Rose Holman and uh, DePaul tomorrow, right yep. here on the network. Yep. Sounds good. See you next. Uh, I guess we're off next week. We're, we're back in two weeks. Who yeah. in two weeks is? Two weeks is. Is that Columbus North? I, but we're down there. We're uh, at Columbus North. I'm I not sure. Think, I have to think about who he, we. Here's the tease, Ray. Look on the website. Indiana SRN has the website. There you go. Ray, thank you very much. Well, Appreciate thank it. Thank you, Keith. All right. Take care. We'll see you, Ray, next time we're here. We'll take a timeout when we come back. The scoreboard with Troy Derogowski right after this. We really focus on modern application development, DevOps, so automating the whole process of delivering your solution, and cloud architecture. It's very important uh, for large, mid to large companies to have cloud partners because you can't possibly have all the talent you need to address the complex ecosystem of the cloud. We advise them on all parts of their business. And then when things are defined and we see a clear goal, Cleanslate also then goes and does the work. We have a team that is very passionate about what they do. We love to solve complex problems, and there's a lot of companies out there that will avoid you know, getting involved in those things, and I think that's why clients like to work with us. Time for our scoreboard at halftime. It's brought to you by our good friends at Piper Logistics. I will remind the, the viewers of <laughs> some of the games that were on the top ten of Keith Myers' games of the week. But we'll we'll get those in a moment. Do you have to even bring that up? Well, let me get the first one here. Evansville Memorial and Evansville Central was one of your games, right? Yes, sir. 28 nothing second quarter. Memorial? Memorial, okay. yes. All right. Uh, also, Ben Davis leading Pike in the second quarter, 45 to nothing. Wow, Pike! did Pike come off the bus? No, okay. they apparently did not. Uh, also tonight, uh, Burbuff is winning their game, 24 to seven. Zionsville is now leading number seven West uh, Westfield at halftime, 17-14. Who is Burbuff playing? Uh, let's see here. They are playing. Hold on a second. No problem. This is called filling. You know what? Well, I was. I'm. I'm going down the line, okay. and then you ask me to go back. Well, well, I'll come back to that game. Okay, How's great. that sound? Thank you, sir. Uh, let it. me get you some of the other scores uh, that you might have missed. Uh, Carmel leading Detroit King eight nothing, second quarter. Uh, Crown Point and Merrillville, one of my top games, six nothing in the first quarter. I tell you what, Merrillville's really good. So is Crown Point. By the way, the one game, by the, uh, I do want to mention one game I did miss, and we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, Franklin Central now leading Brownsburg 21-14 at halftime. Wow. Uh, also tonight, have, I don't know if this is true or not, Fort Wayne Carroll leading Fort Wayne South 69 to nothing at halftime. Oh, wow. Uh, I'd hate to be in that game. Uh, also, let me get down here, Center Grove leading Trinity 7 nothing in the third. That's a fast game. That is very Park Tudor losing to Short Ridge 24-23. That was one of my games, too. Uh, Garen leading Heritage Christian 18-7. No score in that big Kokomo Logansport game that was previewed earlier. Yeah, it was, it's just really tight. It's just a tight <laughs> score. <laughs> so Cena leading Coveted Christian 14-6. Uh, Mount Vernon, how about this one in Greenfield Central? Greenfield Central, 35-28. Now, don't count out Mount Vernon. They won on the last play last, well, last week. Yeah, that's still too close you on that one. You got four seconds before we wrap this up. All right, up. New Pal, Yorktown, 14-9. New Pal leading that game. We will come back. Second half action here from Bishop Chittard, 14-7 Trojans. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. My name is Jay Jones. I'm the commissioner of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, and we appreciate you tuning in to tonight's game. We hope you'll stay tuned to SRN for tomorrow's Heartland Conference Game of the Week. 
showcasing some of the best small college football in the Midwest. We look forward to seeing you then. Welcome back. Look, welcome back to the second half, Indiana SRN. Ron Conley gets the ball, do they not? They get the football to begin this third quarter, yes. And narrowly escaping Bishop Chittard at the end of the second quarter when Bishop Chittard had a chance to maybe even put three on the board, but they failed to get any points. And so that's where we stand at 14-7. It has not been a big offensive game as we you heard the stat man at halftime. When you think Ortega, 114 yards passing, Kinnett, 67 yards rushing. Those are your two leaders on one side. Ash, only 33 yards in the air, and Brandenburg, 18 yards rushing. So at least from a standpoint for Ron Colley, they, they need to get their offense going. Yeah, they do. They really do. And uh, But this is how – we talked about this all the time. This is the, a grind that's been like this for a long time. Bray said last year, as you mentioned, as dominated as Ron Colley had the ball time of possession, yeah. they just win by three at four seconds left in regulation. Well, how many games have you seen where time of possession, you're, you're basically almost a third down and plays 72-34, to 34, and yet you still win the game? That's right. All right, it'll be a return here for Ron Colley. That's Brandenburg on the return again out to about the 27, and that's where Ron Colley will take over first and 10. Barraza there on the tackle on special teams and and when you think about what Bishop Shatar does these guys a lot of them most of them play both ways even on special teams what a cool night though to play I mean it's still a little warm but a nice little breeze but look down at flag it is stopped yeah yeah it's a perfect night we've had some great weeks yeah week three and let's hope we can continue to get eight more weeks all right, first down here for Ron Colley at the 27-yard line. Ash going to keep it himself. Didn't get much, maybe to the 30, and that was about it, or just across the 30. Didn't get quite to the 31. Be gain of three. Feeney on the tackle. Yep, Feeney, Feeney's been in a lot of tackles today. When he gets going and you watch him blitz, mm. he's coming off that, off that, that left wing. side. He's, yes, sir. He's tough. Ash to throw out of the reach of the intended receiver. That's Benich. A little bit of pressure there by the defensive line. Ash at halftime was 5 of 9, 33 yards. He is 1 of his last six. A little bit more pressure maybe they put on him? You know, it's hard to say. I mean, he, he's young, only a sophomore. He's up against a, maybe the four best linebackers. In the state. Yeah. You bet. Across the board, you're going to see because they're quick, and they will come after you. Ash to throw again. This one is going to be caught. It's going to be a first down, I do believe, at about the 37, 38 yard line on the reception. Christian Sweezy. Sweezy hung on that ball. He got hit hard. He gets that first down. He goes right to the sticks. Yeah, got to right to the sticks. Boy, he almost gave up the first down, but good call by the official. Good spot. First down. Sweezy, by the way, averaging over 15 yards a catch on the season, his first catch of the night. Handoff, Ron Colley running the football. That's going to be Dozier on the carry. He'll get to the 42. That'll be gain of four. AC has just walked into the building. I saw him drive up, by the way. He got a special parking spot right over there. <laughs> I love this, man. If we can get a shot, maybe we can get a shot of AC. Well, he's got the crowd going. It'll be second down and five for Ron Colley. They're going to run the football. That's Dozier. Big hole. First down all the way to the Bishop Chittard 48-yard line. 
You got to watch the zone on Channel 8 tonight. Check out the highlights and with the Chittard fan going nuts, Anthony Calhoun. By the way, that 10 yard run there by Dozier, the biggest run of the night for Ron Colley. Dozier again gets the call over the left side, another big hole, and he got on top of a defender and might have gotten all the way to the 40 yard line. He sure did. They have found something in the middle of that line. I'll think about you, uh, Sisk, Jaffe. Oh, he just ran over two defenders. Yeah. It's the momentum of football. It's just so different. So football at the 40. It'll be second down and two. They'll stack him on the near side. Ash to throw. Pumps. Throws in the flat. Dozier, 40, 35, 30, and up cut right there. Big time hit. But a first down all the way to the 28-yard line. That's good enough for 22 yards on the pass play to Dozier. Eighteen seven, Garen over Heritage. Hand off, nothing there. Looks like Dozier on the carry, and it'll be second down and ten. Four different receivers have caught a football tonight for Ron Colley. We are coming up on the nine-minute mark here in the third. Ron Colley trying to tie the game. Brandenburg resets in the backfield. Ash will carry it himself mm. to about the 26. Nice job by the offensive line. Ash now with three carries, six yards, has a touchdown tonight. So it's going to be third and about eight right here. I like the pace. If I'm Ron Colley right now, I'm taking my time. Well, you know what? The really, they throttled it, and then all of a sudden they got control across the 50, yeah. and then they just put it back in the second gear, didn't they? Yeah. Ash to throw, rolling, has time to run, and will tuck it under himself, loses the football, but it goes out of bounds. They're going to spot him right at the 19-yard line. And the late flag, and I don't know what it's for yet, be very interesting. He seemed like he threw the ball out of bounds. Let's take a look at this. Here's the rollout. There's the hit. I think he oh, lost he just it. lost it. Yeah. So we got to wait and see. It'll be a gain of seven if it stands. Haven't had very many flags. We had kind of a, a few there in the second quarter, but I think total of five. It's going to go against Ron Colley, so you can take that run off the board. Not seeing exactly what the official did call they was, did you? I think they declined it. Huh. So it's going to be fourth down. I think yeah. it might have been against Shadard, and they declined. Huh. Well, Ash will get credit for the seven yards. Fourth and one. Big play right here both ways. Ash out of the shotgun. They got him jumping again. The well, second time we've seen this tonight. And what happened there, though, the tight end was the offline move to the front line. Watch this. Look at the tight end. Quarterback then tells him to move up. There's the movement of the offense, and then here comes mm -hmm. the defense. Yep. I couldn't tell who that was there. I thought it was Matt Woods there for a moment, but I don't think it was Woods who jumped. So it'll be first down. Football is at the 14-yard line. Hand off right side. Looked like that might have been Brandenburg on the carry, and it was. They'll put him down at the 12. Gain of just two. Vincent on the tackle. Nine carries now for Brandenburg. He has yet to get 
over five yards on any one carry so far tonight. It'll be second down and eight. But he's been to workhorse, right? Yep. He and Dozier, nine and seven carries. Benish is back in the ball game. He'll be the lone setback. You see Ron Colley stacking three receivers here on the near side, and they'll blow it dead. It's a false start. Yep, another penalty. I do believe the tight end moved a little bit too quick. Here's the snap count. Yep, there oh, he yeah, was. Oh, yeah, he loved it. Yeah. It was a little bit. Just a little. Come on, Rev. Give him a break. He didn't mean to. He said, I'm sorry. Yeah. I heard him. That's never good enough, is it? Nope. So it'll be second down. Football at the 17-yard line. Swing pass oh, and my. knocked down at the 15-yard line. And there is Ryan Keening again. He's cut down a couple of runners here tonight. He just comes five yards up, and he shoots the gap, and he's right there. Gain of just two on the pass play. Under seven minutes to play in this third quarter. By the way, that was Benish on the reception, his first of the night. Third down and ten. He Flags left early again. again. Big, costly penalties right here for Ron Colley. He's just one cadence a little faster than everyone else. He, yeah, yep. just a, just. A, and, you know, the tough thing is the referee is right there watching that. So that, that's an easy play to call if you're right there looking at it. That's Elsner. Second penalty. In this drive, but still a lot of time coming off the clock. They have had the football since the beginning of the third quarter. We're almost to the six-minute mark. Third down at about 15. Ash has a man overthrows him inside the five-yard line. As it falls incomplete. You got to go for three here, right? Don't you? I think you need to get something on yep. the board. They're going to bring in their kicker, and we mentioned he has a really good leg. Levi Whistler, hash mark, right side, 37-yard attempt. Ron Colley trying to make it a four-point ball game right here. High snap, the kick is on the way. We told you he had a great leg, and it is no good. Wide to the right. Wow, what a bullet they dodged. I think if the snap is good, I think it was a little bit high right there. The, bring, had yeah, to bring it down. Yep. The holder had to bring it, and then he had to change the laces too because you can't kick the laces. I saw that in a movie once. I was told if you kick the laces, it just dies on you. Does it? It's a yeah. I don't. I well, don't they kick let the me ball. Kick, so, so Bishop Chatard. I know now when Matt Stein played for Butler and he was their kicker, <laughs> he always <laughs> never kicked this, with this. He just kicked it. He just kicked the ball. First down and ten. Football at the twenty. First time that Bishop Chatard has had it here in the second half. Riley Kinnett on the carry. A bevy of tacklers are there, and he got one yard. You know, Matt played with uh, Charlie Brown, so when oh, he really? got ready to kick, Lucy would, yeah. You know, Tom Dempsey had the longest field goal for a while with at a 63 half foot. yards with half a foot. Yep. Yeah. And he would, that time, he was a straightaway kicker. Yep, but and they don't have those anymore. No, those are long gone. Long gone. gone. Second down and nine. You see Ortega checking the sideline as they change the play, perhaps right here. Once the guys upstairs see something that they need to make a change, they'll get it down quickly. Hand off Kinnett, about to the uh, maybe 24. They took the whole entire 40-second play clock for that one. Kinnett, his... 
18th carry of the night. Mentioned at halftime, he had 67 yards rushing. Add another four to that, he's up to 71. So that's going to be third down and six. We mentioned Colin Guy still out. He will not play tonight. He is in concussion protocol here this evening. Ortega has time, throws over the middle, ball caught. There's Forrestal at the 30, 35, got the first down. See where they mark him out of bounds at the 34-yard line. This is a nice little throw at the flat. Catch the ball, yells bingo. People blocking downfield. Like the stiff arm? I do like the stiff arm. So the football at the 34-yard line. First down here for the Trojans, trying to go to 3-0 on the year, the defending state champions. And boy, last year, Ron Colley lost that tough one to East Central in overtime in the semi-state. Kinnett on the carry, and I think he got back to the line of scrimmage, but he took a shot early in that one. Ron Colley in 4A, Chittard in yep. 3A. This conference is brutal with Rebuff, Garen Catholic, throw Heritage Christian in the mix. Certainly earn it every night. Second down and 10 here for the Trojans. Ortega, RPO, throws, ball caught. On the far side and driven out of bounds near the 39-yard line is going to be Barraza once again on the reception. We'll put it again at the 39-yard line, a gain of five. You know, Barraza, four receptions tonight. He is, I'm sure, playing in place of Colin Guy and really doing a nice job stepping in. 4.03 remaining here in the third. Four receivers now in the lineup. We'll work on the hash mark to the right side. Kinnett on the carry and gets tripped up at the last second. Shoestring tackle right there at the 42-yard line. We'll see Heidelberger on the tackle, one of the reserve linebackers there for Ron Colley. Big fourth down here. Fourth down and two. They have to get to the 44-yard line. Ortega working under center. Now he'll make the changes and shift his two tight ends to the left side. Ortega turns, hands off. Kinnett. Kinnett gets grabbed, and I don't think he made it. Stop short at the 43-yard line. Big defensive stop there for Ron Colley. Take another look at it. Had everything they wanted. Maybe, oh, nice tackle. 14, 44, 8 was in those. Nice job. So we got 3-12 left in this third quarter. Now it, it, here comes the defensive struggles. Yeah. By the way, Casey Horton, the one player you're talking about there, right there for Ron Colley. So now the Royals take over at the 43-yard line. Hand off down to the 40. So gain of about three on the carry is Dozier. Matthew Woods on the tackle. Dozier, his eighth carry of the night. Boy, the yards, though, have been tough coming for Ron Colley here tonight. Tight end will reset to the right. Rolling his ash. Dumps it. Ball caught. Oh. Got to the 39 and a big hit. My goodness. Tight end took that hit. That's Elsner once again. Eddie Vincent on that tackle. It's only a gain of one. Elsner making his fifth reception of the night. 
So again, the nose of the football right at the 39-yard line. James Guthrie, one of the two receivers in the ball game now to the near side. Brandenburg will reset in the backfield. Ash throws, got hit immediately, and guess who? Sam Freeney coming off, Feeney, excuse me, coming off that right side, and he laid it into Ash and right there. I tell you what, Troy, should Tard seem like they knew where they were supposed Look at the defensive one, two, three, four, five, five guys in the back. There's the hit. Oh, he's not even close to being to the ball. And now we got an injury. It's Ash. I mean, he went and when his head snapped back, but they're looking at his right knee, but his head snapped back and hit that turf really hard. We'll take a timeout, 156 to go in the third, 14-7 Trojans. We really focus on modern application development, DevOps, so automating the whole process of delivering your solution and cloud architecture. It's very important uh, for large, mid to large companies to have cloud partners because you can't possibly have all the talent you need to address the complex ecosystem of the cloud. We advise them on all parts of their business. And then when things are defined and we see a clear goal, CleanSlate also then goes and does the work. We have a team that is very passionate about what they do. We love to solve complex problems, and there's a lot of companies out there that will avoid you know, getting involved in those things, and I think that's why clients like to work with us. Ron Colley will punt the football away. It'll be a good punt. And fair caught at the five-yard line, and that'll be not great field position for Bishop Chittard, but let me remind you that, boy, how many times they can get the football and run eight, nine minutes off the clock. The interesting thing, I like the fair catch because I think if you took that ball and you're going to bounce it, you have no idea where that ball is going to go. Yeah. It can go straight backwards, or it could go, you know, and both Ron Colley uh, receivers downfield to get that ball as well. All right, 126 to go here in the third. Last year was 17-14. Both offenses have had a few good moments tonight, but it has been tough gaining yards as that is a gain to the seven-yard line. That's going to be Riley Kinnett once again. I don't think you put the ball up here. I think you run four plays and get out of dodge. Under, under a minute to play, is, uh, they can run this thing down to about 35 seconds. Second down and eight. Horton gets credit for the tackle. Kinnett will stay in the ball game as the lone setback. Ortega to throw. Near side. Way bright at the 10. And gets out to the 15-yard line. Should be good enough for a first down. That'll be a gain of seven. Wow. Were you surprised as much as I am? Well, I'll tell you what, maybe not as much because I think Safe. Ortega does a great job at getting it rid of the ball quickly, and he's very good on those real short passes. Waybright making his third reception. By the way, Sam Feeney coming in now as an extra tight end. And only one receiver is split out. Now they'll have two. Jack Stedham is one of the other ones on the right side. Ortega to throw, oh. and nobody there. Stedham was at the 35. One receiver was coming up the middle, and that was Peraza, and it went right in between them. And that was a little bit behind him and short. But it was first down. Here comes the play. There's the rollout. Oh, he just turned the wrong way, I think, Troy. Yep. Yep, Peraza should have went to the right, went up the field, and we have an incomplete pass. That's why they're teenage boys. Second down and 10. Football stays at the 15-yard line. Stack trips to the right, and a little bit too much jumping up front. They're going to get big number 72, Nathan Turner. If, I, if I'm not mistaken, that's the first... 
penalty on the defensive line today for Ron Cow. Oh, just got that big frame going, couldn't stop it. Yep. Well, and give our take a little credit on that. A too. little, Probably the little hard count. Little, yeah. 12 seconds remaining. Football again at the 20 yard line. Play clock down to 10. Ortega will give it to Kinnett across the 25 near the 27 yard line. That'll be a gain of seven. That's the 22nd carry tonight for Ortega. And they're going to let the clock run out here in the third. We head to quarter number four. Trojans on top of this one, 14 7. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. My name is Jay Jones. I'm the commissioner of the Heartland Collegiate Athletic Conference, and we appreciate you tuning in to tonight's game. We hope you'll stay tuned to SRN for tomorrow's Heartland Conference Game of the Week, showcasing some of the best small college football in the Midwest. We look forward to seeing you then. Hey, Troy, what are you doing tomorrow? Uh, I think I'm heading to Franklin College for College Football Saturday. Yes, College Football Saturday on Indiana SRN. We're leaving, uh, I think we're leaving at 1030 tomorrow 1030, morning. 1030, yes. Uh, we've been invited to the tailgate party. Cannot wait. I bet. Uh, you just... <laughs> <laughs> you know, just hang in with me. Uh, Franklin and University of Olivet, Manchester, North Park, and DePaul, Rose Holman are the three games on the Family and Networks. Football at the 27. Bishop Chittard again will stack it up on the near side right at the hash mark. Ortega hands off Kinnett over the left side. Bulls his way near the 35. We'll put him down at the 34. Gain of seven. You know, that young man right there, Riley Kinnett, 165 pounds, but he runs like he's about 195. What did we call him a bowling ball last time I think we were here because yeah. he was just knocking people over. Norm Boulash. Look that name up. That's real good. Yeah. Second down and three. Kinnett, nothing this time. Mike Carmen called me Norm Boulash at halftime. Did he? Yeah. When uh, I came in today, he says... Keith Myers has arrived in the building. Uh, Memorial leads 49-0 at halftime. That's one of your games, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> I guess I won't have to be watching that one tonight. I'll try to help you next week on those games. I appreciate okay. that. I'll get together. Maybe I should come to production meeting yeah, more often. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Okay, good. Trips near side. Third down here for Bishop Chittard. Kinnett, and he's not going to get the first down. Good defense there by Ron Colley. They play very stiff up front. Mm -hmm. Fourth and one. You got to go, you gotta go for it. Your defense yeah. is playing. I would say so. Boy, but it's dangerous. They didn't get the last fourth down call. Football at the 36. Big defensive potential stop right here for Ron Colley. You dial up Kinnett again. Play clock down to seven. Ortega again out of the shotgun. Kinnett up the middle, got the first down. Boy, he put him at the 39. He, he went through the guard tackle, and he shot out of there almost like a cannon. This is Look how fast he shot out of this thing. There's the hole. Well, you know, that was almost like an option read there for Ortega, and he connect got the ball at the last second. And as you mentioned, Chittard has been known to run off eight minutes. They can. So it'll be first down, football again at the 39-yard line. Kinnett, so far 26 carries tonight. Ortega to throw, ball tipped in the air and incomplete at the 40. Well, that, if that bounces up a little bit higher, by the way, Ryan Keating, the intended receiver, that could have been really dangerous. Broken up by number 35, Ben Brandenburg. 
That ball was up in the air a long time, folks. Ortega came into the ball game 15 to 25 tonight. He's thrown the football 22 times. They must have really felt good about his practice this week to be able to throw the ball even more. He's going to throw again. And another incomplete pass intended for Forrestal at the 45-yard line. Nice job there defensively by J.J. Pendergast. Three straight incomplete passes for Ortega. And this is not what Chittard wants because they want the clock to run. Now the clock is stands yep. still at nine. And the student body over Roncalli is jamming. So now it's going to be third down and ten. Four wide outs in the ball game. And they'll give it to Kinnett. And Kinnett gets hit immediately. Still on his feet but brought down. And the first one to get him inside linebacker Ben Brandenburg. And somebody is hurt. It might be Brandenburg. Football's going to be at the 41-yard line. Gain of only two. It's not Brandenburg who is down. Trainer's out on the field. Okay, now you're going to look at the two plays, the two pass plays where they tried to get those quick hitters. Maybe and then run the ball back there. and run the ball. Yep. Yeah, listen, we we can we all, yeah think about it. You just don't know. You see something. The coordinators see something, and yeah. And the cool thing is, we can we can second and third guess, and coaches understand that. Yeah. Uh, they can't second and third guess. They they got to go with their gut. And well, nine times out of ten, they're better off than we are. Well, the right? other thing is, still got to make a quick decision. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we want to thank Morales Group. Uh, building better futures one story at a time. Located in Indianapolis, Zionsville, Anderson, Columbus, Lafayette. Contact them at 317-472-7600. And thanks also to Wheeler Mission, Bargain Hunters, Treasure Seekers. Find a new place to go shopping. Visit our store at 8640 East 96th Street in Fishers. Thank you for helping us meet our mission. Wheeler Mission Thrift Store. Been there the other day. Was looking for some things. You get it? Did not have my size. Oh. But you, you suggested me get a football jersey. I wait till Did they have jerseys? Th yeah, they did. Really? Yeah, they had a whole bunch of wow. old Colts jersey. No Some number like 18. Really? Yeah. Never heard of him. Yeah. By the way, that was Horton, the middle linebacker there for Ron Colley, who got hurt. So now Bishop Chittard will have to punt the football away. And, oh, this is a shank to the near side. And it's going to go out of bounds. Feeney. Just had that one go off the side of his foot, and right, right at now, the 45. Ron Colley's going to have excellent field position. You know, just it's it's an art. It is. I don't know how you can kick a heavy ball like that. Well, and you don't do it that much when you're Bishop Jatar, and punting is not as something that they average four or five a game. Right. Ash is back in. He'll be joined by Zach Dozier in the backfield. See how much time the Royals can run off the clock here. They need points on the board, trailing it by seven. And there was movement on that right side again. That is three false start penalties they have had in, in the, the last, last two possessions. In the last seven plays. Yeah. Who moved? On the far side here. Yep. Oh, he Tackle. left early. Yep. Tackle because he wanted to pull. Well, he was going to pull, and I think they're going to run student body right. So it's going to be first down and 15. Ron Colley led 7 nothing. They haven't scored since. The offense has struggled. Here's the carry by Dozier. Nothing again. Might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Second, and we'll call it 15. Matt Woods gets credit for the tackle, and his fan club is here. Dozier's carried the ball nine times tonight. His biggest gain was 10 yards. Here's a little pitch, and nothing doing. How about that play? 
by number 85 for Bishop Chittard. That was Sully Cure. You think Chittard uh, probably saw that on film last week? Wow, minus five, back to the 34. Is this con an incomplete pass because he shoveled it? Is, is I mean, is that a completed p pass and then loss? Yeah. Tam Sweet and Savory Cafe, good food for breakfast, lunch, delicious baked goods. Check out our daily specials. Open 8 to 2 Sunday, uh, Tuesday through Sunday. Third down and 19 here for Ron Colley. Man in motion, Ash to throw down the middle and knocked down at the last second. What a great defensive play. And that was your defensive back, Ryan Keating, doing it again. You're not going to see a better play than this. He stretched out for this ball. Watch this. Wow. Oh, my goodness. That's... Boy, and, and let me tell you, with Christian Sweezy at 6'2", 200, big target right there. We have seen Ryan Keating come up with some big tackles and no bigger pass defensive play than that one right there. And now Ron Colley has to give the football back. Nice boot. What will Bishop Shatar do here inside the 25 on the spin? Not a big return, but nonetheless for Jack Stedham. Hopefully be placed at the 27. Got a late flag. And now we wait and see who this penalty is on. Now the defenses on both sides really have just been very, very good tonight. And you got to think illegal about, shift. Uh, he had an illegal shift against Roncalli. That's a five-yard penalty. So they're going to be kick. Can't put time back on the clock. Nope. So you lost seven seconds there, or so. You know we had mentioned Horton who went out for Ron Colley a little bit ago. Hopefully he's okay. He looked like he had a cramp. He has played well tonight defensively. You talk about Brandenburg. He's played really well. Special teams, running the football, playing that middle linebacker position. And then, of course. Oh, they wouldn't come and got that. Yeah, almost did. Another short punt. You know, Feeney had a. Excellent play moments ago, Benson. We haven't heard oh much my from goodness. Tremaine, though. Yeah. Troy, look at this. This is going all the way back to the 40-yard line. Now they put it at the 43. 43. Yeah. Wow. Excellent field position. Well, here's what you need to do. If you want to call me coach, I will be more than happy to Coach, what are you going to do? Going to run the ball for 7 minutes and 23 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they probably wouldn't have minded if it were back maybe at the 30, 35 yard line because you get a little extra time to run some more plays and perhaps take more time off the clock, but they'll take it right here. Hand off up the middle and there's Kinnett again, dives ahead to the 37. They will not be in a hurry to stamp this ball. Pendergast and Brandenburg, the two fine inside linebackers there for Ron Colley. High school football next week on Indiana SRN. I think we're at Warren Central at Warren Central. Yeah. That's at Warren, right? Uh, at Lawrence. At Lawrence. Yes, sir. Okay. At Lawrence Central. Yes, sir. Second down and four. Hand off. In fact, Shaw in the ball game. We haven't seen him carry the football tonight. And he'll get to the 36. Only a gain of one. Shaw came into this one with 90 yards on 14 carries, but it's been Riley Kinnett tonight with 28 carries. You got to start thinking if you're Ron Colley right here, when do you start trying to take some timeouts? Each team still has three. Ortega, he has a good look at that play clock, and he's going to run it down. He's got it down to eight and a recheck at the sidelines. Looks like they'll stay with the same called play. 
Third down and three. Ortega up the middle. First down all the way to the 20, one yard line. Now I'm gonna, I think they changed that play because the, the offensive quarter switched from one to two. And I'm, I'm not sure, let's watch the sideline. There's the offensive quarter. Uh, yeah, it was too late there. But I tell you what, that's a great play. He had that in the gut all the way. Oh, what's the? That was against Bishop Chatard. I'm not sure that I saw what it was. Here we go. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against Bishop Chatard after the first down carry, but it marks him back 15 yards, right? Chains are a little bit messed up on the other side. Still a first down, though. Still a first down. But back to the 36. Now, again, that may not be a bad thing when you consider you have more real clock. estate to work with. There you go. Yeah. Good call. I don't know you don't want to end sports my conduct. No. Shaw on the carry. Inside the 35, down to about the 32. That'll be a gain of four. 40 second play, Clark just started, so they could run this down to under five. Yeah. Well, again, Ron Colley has three timeouts, but they know they need to hold on to those timeouts for the offense. Try to get that ball back and tie this game up. Shaw again on the carry. May Maybe get a yard. one. Yeah, Brandenburg, there he is again. I'm going to say no gain on that one. If you're Chittard, you would like to have a couple more first downs. Yeah. Would you not? I would love to have them. You're, you're really in the driver's seat here. You're going to run down time. If you score quickly. Oh, you, you're giving them opportunities. Well, Ron, but Ron Colley, they would have to score twice then. That's true. So really everything is in your court at this point if you're Bishop Chittard. Ortega to throw, sideline, and nothing there. Pass intended here for Jack Stedham. Four straight incomplete passes now for do you Ortega. Punt here or do you kick here? I don't think they're going to try a field goal here, would they? Because no, Feedy's in, play. he's no, going to yeah. punt it away. Got to aim for the, the old coffin corner. Yeah. Now, Feeney did not hit his last one very well. So he's going to try to pin Ron Colley deep on this one. Plenty of protection. Got a good leg into it. That's a heck of a punt. Unfortunately, though, it goes into the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. But really, no harm, no foul there. Ball gets at the 80 yard, uh, the 20 yard line. You got 80 yards and four minutes and 18 seconds to play. Your producer's kind of a hard nose. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I adjusted my mic. I said it's now you got 80 yards to go with 419, uh, 418 to play. You got three timeouts left. Chittard has three timeouts left. Don't forget high school, uh, college football tomorrow on the network. I'm looking forward to going down to Franklin. Should be fun. It's a beautiful ballpark and beautiful atmosphere. We were Good. a couple times down there last yeah. year. You know, Last year, I think we did seven games. This year, we're doing 22, 25, that's something like that. That's a lot of games. Good games. First down and 10 here for Colin Ash and Ron Colley. They'll try to run it near side, and there's nothing there. Maybe a yard. Dozier on the carry. That's going to be Front Dozier. Okay, Nick looks like he's talking to the trainers. Well, that wouldn't we'll be keep, good news to lose him, though. We'll huh? keep an eye on that. Clock down to 349. Still three timeouts for Ron Colley. Dozier stays in. Ash will reset his tight end to the right. Keeper by Ash. Tripped up. Might have gotten back. Maybe to the 21. There just wasn't much there. Feeney's there on the outside. Tough to run against him. Feeney has stayed home a lot to get a lot of those. Under 
317 now and running. This could it Nah, it can't be four down territory, could it? I would think so. I don't yes? think yeah. Or, or you don't, I don't think so. Okay. I think they do. They've got to go for okay. it. Okay. Third down and nine. Ash. Sideline. Intercepted. Picked off by Zach Garner. And then some extracurricular activity. As you saw right there, Brandenburg upset about that interception, but that may seal it right there on the interception by Zach Garner. Here's the throw. We just underthrew well, him. He went and got it. Yeah, but yeah, he underthrew he, him. Yeah, about, about a yard. Brandenburg trying to strip the football. He was trying there. to strip the football. Yep. Colin Guy dives in and get, gets the high five to his guy that caught the ball. ball the That's leadership right there. Yeah. I told you I could play, Coach. Two. Yeah. I like that leadership. Yeah, I do, too. Trips left. Run the football, right? Well, and then you know Ron Colley's going to have to start burning timeouts. They've got to have some time with a football. That'll be Shaw, and he might get to the line of scrimmage. We'll put it at the 45, and there's one timeout right there. So gain of one. Shaw, by the way, carrying the football because Riley Kinnett, as we said earlier, was on the sidelines. We're not sure if he's hurt or not. We would like to thank the corporate sponsors that made this possible, and you, if you like to have a sponsorship as well on Indiana SRN, you can contact us at coach at Indiana SRN. We'll work on in, work with everybody's budget. Yeah. Be happy to do to put more kids on uh, the internet. Officially human, Tam Sweet and Savory Cafe, Willer Mission, and Thrift Store, Purdue Local, Purdue, Purdue I'm sorry, Boiler Maker Local 374. I got Purdue on my mind. Oh, I know you do. Uh, Morales Group and Piper Logistics uh and uh, just a great group of people to be able to do that. We're glad that we're part of the Chittard family. If you like to have any questions or comments, please send us an email at coach at indianasrn.org. We also want to thank the hospitality, oh, the boy. Trojan horse. Yeah. Once again, I have never seen Matt Stein eat as many hot dogs tonight that I have. Hey, listen, if it's free, it's for him. Yeah, I mean, and then, and congratulations to our new camera girl, Sierra. Yeah. Nice job tonight, Sierra. Yeah. Good job. No, the record at nine hot dogs is still good. Still good, is it? Here's Shaw again. Got you, to the 43 yard line. You know who owns that nine hot dog? You? In a, nope. No, no. Sean Craw. Oh, Sean Kroll. Nine, yeah. You know, Sean is no longer with us. He's now at North uh, at Hamilton Southeastern doing the th his thing. And, you know, we can pick on him because he, All we he, want. he usually doesn't watch listens to the show. Though he did watch last week. Oh, he did? Yeah, because yeah. he texted in. Yeah, he yeah. said he did. A, you did a good job. Yeah. Oh, well, bless his heart. Yeah, well. Yeah. Who did you work with last week? Was it you again? No. No, it was. Uh, Ryan Thomas. No. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, Ryan yeah, Thomas. Thomas. Isn't Cathedral graduate, you know. Is it? What's it? <laughs> Jarrett Thomas. Jarrett. <laughs> I know a Ryan. I know a Ryan Thomas, but that's not it. Yeah, he's probably going. What? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's on vacation. Oh, yeah. already? Well, you know. He works one game and goes on vacation. Wait a minute, he's a pro player. He probably needed to rest. Ah. <laughs> uh, Seattle loves him. He did a great job, by the way. He will be back next week, I'm sure. Not with you, though. No, because nope. you and I will be together again. Of course. Yes. Someone's got to carry you. <laughs> Thank you. Third down and seven. Second timeout used there by Ron Colley. They have one remaining. This time, Ortega will keep it 40, 35. Flag is down. It's going to come back. Got to hold. Oh. Ortega's got to be going. you got to be kidding me. I don't know if it was Charlie Wright or it was Harrison Campbell they got there, but it was one of those two guys. And you know what makes 
that even more frustrating is the play was already downfield when the hold happened. There's the hold right there, Troy. Yep. yep. Ah. That's a great call by the official staying with that, though, because he opened up the hole by taking the guy down. I mean, you can hold him, but you can't tackle him. No. Ortega had a run of 15 earlier. That would have been very close to 15 again, but it's all the way back to the 49-yard line. And Roncalli calls her last time out. We'll take one with him with 2.35 to play. Warehousing to transportation and everything in between, Piper Logistics does it all. Centrally located, Piper Logistics has two warehouses in Indianapolis and a warehouse in Cincinnati, Ohio. Piper Logistics houses over 1 million square feet. Along with our transportation department, we can provide service to half the United States markets. Can't get to a computer? Then we've got you covered. Just go to the Indiana SRN app and stay up to date with all of your favorite teams. You can watch live coverage or relive the experience with our on-demand service. Well, Ron Colley just using their final timeout 235 remaining unless somehow the Royals can come up with a turnover right here Bishop Chittard will keep it on the ground big hole on the near side by Shaw I do believe down to the 45 that'll be a gain of four so looks like Riley Kinnett is done for the night So we're looking at fourth and nine. Ron Colley's still in this, though. Right? Well, they'll have plenty. Of, they'll have time. Yep. No timeouts. That's going to hurt That'll them. That'll hurt them. Feeney will come in to punt it away. And, and that means there's a lot of pressure here on Colin Ash because he's got to get sideline balls and get it out of bounds, get some timeouts there. And I believe the Bishop Chittard is going to call a timeout. That's a smart play. It ran down all the way to one second. So next week, got a few more games on tap for now. Evansville. Go down to Evansville. Memorial is in uh, playing next week, and I do believe Kevin Christian is on the schedule. Okay. Um, I'm not. I don't remember who they play, and then uh, of course Warren Central and Warren Central. That'd be a fun our game. one. Yeah, that's going to be a fun one. By the way, my next door neighbor, he plays at uh, Lawrence Central. Is that right? Yeah. So first time at Lawrence Central this uh, this year. Of course, college football for you next week as well. Got volleyball. You and I are doing volleyball next Tuesday. Yeah. As we will see, I think, Kevin and Christian taking on this Chittard volleyball team. Is that who it is? And I didn't look. I just know that. Matthew will be with us oh. on Tuesday. I think Matthew is uh, running to Remy and will be in the nice new studios at Indiana SRN. Have you seen the new gig, Diggs? I, I have not. you got to go see the Diggs. We named the studios. You did? Yeah, after the top three announcers. <laughs> uh, by the way, unofficially, Riley Kinnett, 28 carries, 105 yards. That will take a Bishop Chittard bounce. It will be down at the 10. 134. Ortega, by the way, tonight. 24 passes. Mm. 13 completions. I'll get his yardage for you here in a moment. He had 114 at the half. In the second half, only 18 yards passing. Ash to throw. Too high, incomplete. Almost intercepted again. Intended for Shotley. Chittard heads to Cathedral next week. Yeah. 
How about that, that one? That game huh? will be at Arlington High School. That game will be. You think you have a crowd tonight? Yeah. By the way, Ortega 13 to 24, 132 yards. Ash to throw over the middle. The big tight end makes the catch out to the 20, maybe 21 yard line. That'll be Elsner again. Gain of 11. Nice pass, nice catch. Get the first down. Yes. Ball spike incomplete. Incomplete pass, second down. Well, they wanted to stop they the clock. They got to stop the clock, yes. Yep. Elsner, by the way, six receptions on the night. Second down and 10, 118 remaining. Ash to throw again. There's Elsner, tripped up. Did he step out of bounds? I think he may have at the 29-yard line. That'll be a gain of eight. And we have another stoppage of play. Now, the official did not signal out of bounds until late. But I think they're going to ask to put some time on this clock. Elsner, by the way, seven receptions, 48 yards tonight. Ash has thrown the ball 21 times here this evening. He came in 15 to 31. So both quarterbacks are throwing the ball quite a bit tonight compared to what they did. And they put um, six seconds on the clock at 113. So it'll be second down and 10. Ash again over the middle. Ball's going to be caught. That'll be Sweezy on the reception to the 35. So they will spike it again to stop the clock at 106. What do you think of this? Well, it's about all they got. Yeah. I mean, they just, I don't think that Colin Ash has the arm to air it out. So but I don't think they're do desperate right now. I mean, they got a long way to go still. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I don't think they're desperate. Yeah. You just got to defend the long pass. Yeah. That, or the little dink. 106 is a long time. Yeah. We've seen teams lose. Well, and you can see right now that Bishop Chittard, they're going to bring the pressure again. Quick throw and knocked down at the last second. Another great play, this time by Stedham. And that was intended for Shotley. He does pretty good on the roll, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Look at that nice shot, camera shot. I tell you what, our producer, camera guy, camera person, been right on top of things tonight. By the way, Zach Garner was there too. Almost got his second interception. Oh, oh boy, that one knocked oh. down. He oh. had that ball in his hands, Troy. Yep. There is Hot Stetler. That would have sealed it right there. And oh, that's one Stepped of those. right in front. Like, oh. He was thinking touchdown too, I think. Fourth down here. Fourth and ten. Ash, 23 pass attempts. Fourth down and 10. The fans here on the near side for Bishop Chittard now getting into it. Ash could be their final play. It is low and it is incomplete. And that's going to seal it tonight for Bishop Chittard. That defense playing so well tonight, even without Colin Guy. Colin Guy got hurt on the second play of the night. <laughs> but I tell you what, his leadership. Well, the victory formation. The, they'll have to run, I think, possibly two. By the way, tonight, Ash 12 of 24 for 80 yards. He led the way offensively as far as carrying the football. 
Brandenburg carried it nine times. Ended up with only, what, 10, 14, 11, 15, 18, 20 yards. Dozier carried the ball 10 times. He finished with 28 yards rushing, and that's going to do it. Chittard will go 3 0. Will probably stay the number one seat, uh, number one in 3A in the Indiana SRN poll. Sports page will probably uh, have a recap with all of this. And the cool thing about this is uh, all those players will go back home and watch this on replay. And Troy, good job. All the scoring in the first half, though. Yep. How about that, huh? Yep. Great job by our crew tonight. We appreciate you coming and staying with us. Don't forget now, college football tomorrow starts at 1.30. Franklin and University of Olivet, Manchester and North Park at one o'clock at uh, 6 o'clock. And then DePaul goes home in at 7 o'clock all tomorrow right here on Indiana SRN. So again, Bishop Jutard with a win at 14-7. They move to 3-0 on the season. Ron Colley will go to 1-1. They'll take on Columbus North next week. That is a 6A opponent. And again, Bishop Jutard, they will have a tough one next week playing Cathedral. So both teams will play up in both 6A coming up next week. And before you know it, we'll be in week number four. Yep. That will do it. Bishop Chittard with a win, 14-7. Thanks to the entire crew, and thank you for joining us here on Indiana SRN.